The story begins in a strange world where we see students carrying swords and shields, while others are accompanied by floating monster companions. As it turns out, the world changed drastically 70 years ago. The world changed and the game world merged with the real world. Monsters in the game descend into reality and bring chaos to the world. However, humans began to be awakened, and levels, professions and equipment have become the standard for measuring a person. Powerful professions and skills bestowed unparalleled combat effectiveness upon those who wielded them. It has been three years since our main character, Yun Chen, time traveled into this strange world and he now navigates the surroundings with ease, the once bizarre sights no longer registering as strange. Our main character walked past the classroom and overheard a group of students arguing about who should be the party leader for tomorrow's exam, just before a teacher slammed open the door and burst into the classroom reprimanding them for not going home. The teacher shifted attention to Yun Chen, questioning why he hadn't changed his job with the college entrance exam looming. The teacher explained that although the jobless initially enjoy a broader skill set, the drawback becomes pronounced at higher levels as those who undergo a job change accumulate more attributes and skill points with each level increase. The teacher persisted in advising Yun Chen to choose a job before the examination, confident in Yun Chen's abilities to secure a good ranking. Yun Chen reassured the teacher, expressing his goal to achieve the number one spot. Privately, Yun Chen pondered that he could compensate for skill and attribute points without changing jobs, thanks to an activated system. By completing daily tasks like 10 kilometers running in 100 squats, sit-ups and push-ups, the system rewarded him with additional points. Despite the absence of powerful job-specific skills, Yun Chen remained unfazed as the system will also grant him skill points and hidden skill books to make up for it. Surveying the endless list of skills, he believed that given enough time, he could master all. The system, visible only to Yun Chen, suited him for its discretion. After daily tasks, he evenly distributed attribute points. On top of the daily tasks, the system also issues missions for additional rewards. Looking at the system screen displaying the mission to excel in the upcoming examination, Yun Chen was determined to secure the top spot, trusting the system that had never let him down before. On the examination day, students gathered in the square before the suspended gates above the grounds. The teacher explained the three dungeon difficulties behind each gate, easy, hard, and nightmare. Students may form teams of up to five members, emphasizing that higher difficulties and smaller team sizes yield more points but also pose greater risks, he cautioned the students to choose wisely as the monsters in the dungeons are real and can kill them. He hoped that they can all make it back alive. With the final gates opening, the examination officially commenced. Today's challenge, the Goblin Forest. Most students entered in as parties as only members of the Team Rocket dared to challenge the dungeon solo. However, the audience noticed an unexpected solo challenger who looked oddly familiar on the screens, none other than our MC, Yun Chen. Adding to the surprise, he opted for the highest nightmare difficulty. The crowd grew even more puzzled as they observed Yun Chen carrying various weapons. Could it be that he hadn't changed his job before the examination? The audience all thought that Yun Chen is a suicidal idiot for challenging the nightmare difficulty as a solo jobless player. Even the teacher was shocked to see this. The headmaster of Yun Chen's school was visibly annoyed, demanding an explanation from the teacher. The teacher explained that Yun Chen's awakened talent is supreme proficiency, which increases all of Yun Chen's skills by two grades. He should be able to manage, hopefully. Yun Chen surveyed the dungeon entrance, accompanied by a heap of bones, sensing an eerie aura. As he ventured in, activating the swordsman's basic skill, speed boost, he swiftly charged at a group of goblins, the goblins spotted Yun Chen and also prepared to launch an attack. As the goblins reached Yun Chen's attack range, he aimed his magic staff and launched the basic fireball skill towards them. A huge explosion occurred and destroyed the army of goblins. The audience was shocked as they did not expect such huge destructive power from the basic fireball skill. In an instant, the magic staff in Yin Chen's hand transformed into a sword. The equipment is made of two stars black metal and can be used interchangeably as a staff and a sword. It also grants plus 5 intelligence when used as a staff and plus 5 strength when used as a sword. Yun Chen unleashed another swordsman skill, the Windwalk Slash, seamlessly continuing his assault on the surrounding goblins. Faced with an increasing horde, he executed the Wind Flame Strike, a basic skill of the demonic swordsman, wiping them out in a single powerful strike. 
Among the spectators, some cheered for Yun Chen, impressed by his prowess, while others remained stunned. His solo performance rivaled that of a party consisting of one mage and three swordsmen. In the headmaster's office, confusion clouded the headmaster's expression as he observed Yun Chen's exceptional skill proficiency. The teacher clarified that it was due to Yun Chen's awakened talent, supreme proficiency, enhancing all his skills by two grades. As it turns out, in this world, a small portion of people have a chance to awaken a unique talent when they are young between 12 to 25 years old, influencing their choice of job class. Those with magic-related talents tended to choose magic-related jobs, while combat-related talents steered individuals towards roles like warrior and swordsman. Additionally, some talents were more lifestyle-oriented, such as cooking proficiency or housework skills. The headmaster sighed, realizing that supreme proficiency could only elevate skill grades to a maximum of C+. Although advantageous in the early stages, its effectiveness diminished at higher levels. While Yun Chen impressed as an extremely talented fighter, the teachers recognized that his awakened talent meant his skills would soon hit a ceiling, making it less worthwhile to invest time and effort in cultivating his potential. Yun Chen dispatched the remaining goblins, his sword still dripping with blood, and reached the dungeon's end. Standing before a towering door that marked the entrance to the next level, he braced himself. As the door swung fully open, a vast horde of hundreds and thousands of goblins turned their attention towards the entrance, ready to confront their challenger. Observing the approaching goblin army, Yun Chen employed the analysis skill, revealing a diverse array of goblin types within the horde. With a resounding roar, the goblin centurion commanded the goblins to attack. Leading the charge were goblin knights and riders, supported by spellcasting goblins providing buffs. The coordinated teamwork will pose a formidable challenge for Yun Chen if left unchecked. Reacting swiftly, he drew his magic staff, activating the priest skill, Illumination, to blind the charging goblins and startle their mounts, causing the riders to tumble off. While they are still being blinded, he then quickly moves to the backlands and kills the troublesome mages before they can cast their spells. The goblins soon realized that Yun Chen is behind enemy lines and soon charged towards him. Surrounded, Yun Chen calmly employed the Kage Bushino Jitsu skill learned from his foxy friend, summoning a clone that will inherit 35% of his stats. Together, they moved like agile assassins, dispatching many goblins. Witnessing the carnage, the enraged centurion entered berserk mode, doubling in size and launching a fierce attack. Yun Chen skillfully evaded the centurion's attacks, acknowledging it wasn't time to face the boss. He began to summon water elementals, but before the spell completion, the screen switched to another student scene, disappointing the crowd. In the control station, the station manager scolded the staff for switching channels, demanding they cater to the audience's desire for Yun Chen's battle. The channel returned to Yun Chen, revealing the intense battle between goblins and water elementals. The centurion's berserk mode ended, setting the stage for the final boss battle. Yun Chen, standing firm, awaited the goblin boss's move, recognizing it as a nightmare-level challenge. As the boss charged, Yun Chen deployed a trap, immobilizing it briefly, then hurled fireballs at its face. Unfazed, the goblin boss swung its fists, prompting Yun Chen's nimble evasion. Upon realizing it had stepped on a mine, the goblin boss found itself engulfed in flames as the explosive device detonated. As the explosive aftermath enveloped the battlefield, all goblins and water elementals turned to witness the immense blast. Yun Chen, however, knew the goblin boss wouldn't succumb to this explosion. As the smoke gradually cleared, the goblin boss emerged, bearing burnt marks and weariness. The goblin boss, preparing to unleash its devastating area attack spell, or stampede, found itself thwarted by Yun Chen's swift response. Giant vines erupted from the ground, ensnaring the boss and forcefully slamming it down. Capitalizing on the moment, Yun Chen unleashed a frost bullet, inflicting frost damage and reducing the boss's attack speed. Undeterred, Yun Chen continued the onslaught, bombarding the goblin boss with rocket strikes, water spells, and thunder attacks. The relentless assault ultimately led to the demise of the goblin boss. As the goblin boss fell, pity echoed through the audience. Teachers discussed Yun Chen's adept use of skills, highlighting the importance of the vines and ice attacks in immobilizing and countering the boss. The teachers acknowledged the jobless versatility recognizing Yun Chen's dedicated effort in mastering numerous skills. Expecting a top-five provincial rank, 
they congratulated Yun Chen's teacher, anticipating a record-breaking achievement. The headmaster, expressing confidence in Yun Chen's potential, believed he could secure a top three spot and invited Yun Chen's teacher to sit beside him. The teacher, pleased with Yun Chen's performance, savored the moment. Meanwhile, the junior spectators were inspired by Yun Chen's jobless prowess, dreaming of emulating him. A senior, however, urged them to face reality, acknowledging Yun Chen's exceptional versatility and advising against blindly imitating him. Undaunted by the challenges ahead, Yun Chen surprised both the audience and teachers by immediately advancing to the next stage without rest. The teachers questioned his haste, assuming he needed time to recover. Speculations arose among the audience, with some worried about Yun Chen's recklessness. However, a junior reminded them of the unused equipment, while the skeptical senior doubted Yun Chen's survival in the face of higher-level monsters in the next stage. Surveying the next stage teeming with even more goblins, Yun Chen strategized. Recognizing this as his last chance to use the water elementals, he commanded them to block incoming attacks from the buffed goblins. As the mist lifted, the goblins were astonished to find Yun Chen still standing, carrying two large cannons on his shoulders, poised for a formidable counterattack. In the office, the headmaster and the teacher engaged in a discussion about the sharpshooter class, acknowledging its basic yet intricate skills. The passive skill, Zealous Pursuit, was noted as particularly valuable, though it requires absolute accuracy to trigger it, making it challenging. A senior in the audience doubted Yun Chen's ability to master the complicated skills of the sharpshooter class, emphasizing the abundance of skills already available in the jobless class. As Yun Chen fired the first shot, the junior fangirl enthusiastically cheered for Yun Chen. The first shot he fired landed as a headshot, triggering zealous pursuit and granting him a buff that increased both his shooting and moving speed. Yun Chen continued to impress, landing shots and accumulating zealous pursuit stacks. Goblins attempted to retaliate, but Yun Chen skillfully dodged all incoming attacks, utilizing abilities like rapid fire, rapid reload, deadly shot, and burst shots. The crowd marveled as all of Yun Chen's shots were headshots, earning him admiration and newfound fans who considered him the ultimate sharpshooter. Even the skeptical senior admitted Yun Chen's prowess and predicted him to be the top scorer. Back in the office, the headmaster expressed pride in Yun Chen's strategic approach, despite an earlier statement suggesting recklessness. Another teacher noticed that Yun Chen had not used any potions, leading to speculation about his confidence or recklessness. Yun Chen, however, stared at his pistols, realizing they were overused and unusable due to being of the lowest black metal grade. He discarded them, as if acknowledging that the pistols had fulfilled their mission. The headmaster Shocked at the worn-out pistols, scolded the teacher for allowing Yun Chen to take the exam with such inadequate weapons. The teacher explained Yun Chen's financial constraints as Yun Chen still has his mother and younger sister to take care of. The headmaster regretted not being informed earlier, expressing a willingness to buy better weapons for him. As Yun Chen approached the door to the next stage, the headmaster remarked that the upcoming room housed the final boss. If Yun Chen maintained his current pace and successfully conquered the next stage, he stood poised to secure the prestigious top scholar title, a momentous achievement for the school. However, the headmaster warned that if he failed due to subpar equipment, it would be the teacher's responsibility. Nervous and hopeful, the teacher prayed for Yun Chen's success. As Yun Chen confidently opened the door to the next stage, the audience erupted with excitement, realizing that he was on the brink of facing the final boss. A buzz of anticipation swept through the crowd as they considered the historic event unfolding before them. Observing Yun Chen's unused spear, the audience eagerly awaited the unveiling of his complete fighting prowess. The screen abruptly went blank, prompting complaints from the audience about the untimely channel switch. When the scene reappeared, shock swept through the spectators as a student was depicted with a spear pierced through his body, identified as a member of Team Rocket. The following scenes revealed more casualties, highlighting the numerous students who had succumbed to the Goblin Centurion. Some had even perished in desperate attempts to escape using TP scrolls. Amidst the chaos, lights emanated from the gate in the main square as students returned to town through the portal. However, the aftermath of the war stampede skill left them severely injured. Devastated by their results, some students faced the grim realization that no university would accept them. The audience slowly grasped the severity of the exam, acknowledging that this year's challenges exceeded those of previous years. 
fear and uncertainty gripped the crowd as they contemplated their inability to meet Yun Chen's standards, even with an additional year of training. The overpowering strength of the Goblin Centurion fueled their anxiety. In the headmaster's office, the decision was made to switch the channel back to Yun Chen to uplift morale. The teacher recognized Yun Chen's prominence, surpassing the usual focus on Team Rocket. Yun Chen was now deemed superior to all year three seniors in the headmaster's eyes. As the screen transitioned back to Yun Chen, he proceeded down an empty walkway in the dungeon, leading to a menacing figure on a throne, the Goblin Lord. The Goblin Lord, level 16, rank gold 1 star, issued a warning to Yun Chen. However, Yun Chen remained undeterred but was impressed by the Goblin Lord's aura. Yun Chen proclaimed that he will end the battle in the next 20 seconds. And activated the Blood Monk skill, Blood Rage, to boost his stats significantly. The teacher and headmaster were shocked by Yun Chen's reckless strategy. Yun Chen rushed at the Goblin Lord, swinging his spear. The Goblin Lord praised his speed but retaliated with a big swing of its axe, seemingly cutting Yun Chen in half. The audience gasped, but they soon realized it was just a clone. Meanwhile, Yun Chen got behind the Goblin Lord, slashed its back, and then faced it again. He used a skill called Illumination to blind the Goblin Lord and attacked while it was disoriented, but Yun Chen's spear couldn't pierce the Goblin Lord's chestplate, and it broke into two. The furious Goblin Lord swung its axe creating dust and smoke. When the smoke cleared, Yun Chen was out of reach, using a druid skill called Entangle to trap the Goblin Lord's axe with vines. With 13 seconds left in the Blood Rage mode, the battle was reaching its peak. The audience found it strange that Yun Chen's spear broke so easily even though he hadn't used the spear throughout the battle. The senior and headmaster weighed in, explaining that Yun Chen's exceptionally high stats and the added boost from the Blood Rage mode rendered a basic black metal spear inadequate for withstanding his relentless attacks. The headmaster criticized the teacher for allowing such low-quality equipment in a battle of this caliber. Feeling the pressure from the headmaster's comments, the teacher nervously pondered how Yun Chen would break through the Goblin Lord's defense without the spear. The potential consequences of the top scorer's demise due to subpar equipment weighed heavily on the teacher, who feared failing his students. Meanwhile, the intense battle continued. With 13 seconds left in the Blood Rage mode, Yun Chen adjusted his strategy when the Goblin Lord unexpectedly entered Berserker mode. Activating the Ranger skill, Detect Weakness, Yun Chen found no discernible vulnerability in the Goblin Lord's defenses. Undeterred, the Goblin Lord attacked fiercely, causing Yun Chen to lose his balance with the skill, Earthquake. Cornered, Yun Chen used the swordsman's skill, Block, to defend against the Goblin Lord's assault but was ultimately sent crashing into the wall. With only nine seconds remaining in Blood Rage mode, concerns grew among the audience and the headmaster, who believed the battle should have ended with an unbroken spear. With no potions for healing, Yun Chen faced the Goblin Lord's impending final blow. Seizing the moment, Yun Chen utilized the druid skill, Spiked Vines, causing the Goblin Lord to dodge, the audience initially perceived Yun Chen's move as desperate, considering that the Entangle skill wasn't conventionally an offensive tactic. The audience also found it odd that the Goblin Lord, who didn't defend against Yun Chen's spear attacks earlier, suddenly seemed fearful of the Entangling Vines. As Yun Chen analyzed the situation, he deduced that the Goblin Lord's weakness was hidden behind its cape which revealed to be an old injury marked by a giant X on its back. Utilizing the Entangle skill, Yun Chen immobilized the Goblin Lord and swiftly positioned himself behind. Initiating the Fire Punch, he aimed at the Goblin Lord's back, with only three seconds of Blood Rage mode left. Despite the Goblin Lord attempting to dodge, the vines hindered its movement, and in the final two seconds, the Fire Punch struck, causing flames to erupt from the Goblin Lord's chest as it toppled backward. The audience erupted in cheers, witnessing Yun Chen's strategic brilliance. As the blood rage mode ended, the Goblin Lord, momentarily confident, declared Yun Chen's defeat. However, it soon realized that Yun Chen's spear was embedded in the ground behind it, aimed precisely at its hidden weakness. The spear punctured the Goblin Lord as Yun Chen also collapsed to the ground. With a remarkable completion time of 14 minutes and 47 seconds, Yun Chen successfully finished the examination. The system notified him that his scores were recorded and prompted him to collect his well-deserved dungeon clearance rewards. The arena erupted in cheers as Yun Chen emerged victorious, accomplishing the remarkable feat of clearing the dungeon in a mere 20 seconds. 
A notification materialized, showcasing Yun Chen's results, an impressive SSS rating, the first person to conquer the dungeon. His rewards included 15,650 experience points, 20 attribute points, and 20 skill points. Additionally, he received gold 1-star rated green forest shoulder pads, belt, and gloves, along with the coveted title, Goblin Killer, providing a 25% damage boost against goblins. Yun Chen's levels soared by 3, granting him 9 more attribute points and skills points. Exclaiming at the bountiful rewards, Yun Chen expressed confidence in securing the province's top scorer title. Yet, he tempered his expectations until the official results were announced. As the dungeon's first conqueror, Yun Chen faced a unique opportunity to choose one skill from three options. After careful analysis, he selected the A tier quick casting skill. Equipping his new gear, a green forest belt, shoulder pads, and gloves, Yun Chen marveled at their superiority over his previous black metal equipment. The green forest set bonus, triggered after leaving combat for 5 seconds, grants gradual recovery of health, MP, and stamina. With newfound confidence, Yun Chen anticipated swiftly dispatching the goblin lord with his upgraded equipment. Utilizing a TP scroll, he returned to the entrance, greeted by a thunderous applause from the crowd. The headmaster and teachers extended their congratulations, capturing the moment with a series of reluctant photographs. The headmaster assured Yun Chen that the results would be revealed in seven days, expressing expectations of a top three provincial ranking. Yun Chen, welcomed back to his residence with a private car, contemplated the potential rewards and benefits for his school. Upon reaching home, Yun Chen encountered a table adorned with humble home-cooked food, prepared by his devoted sister, Yun Tang. The sibling's father had fallen in battle, and their mother passed away due to illness, leaving them with meager resources. Even Yun Chen's black metal equipment was passed down from their father. Yun Tang, assuming all household responsibilities, supported her brother's training without complaint. Yun Chen, determined to repay her kindness, revealed the prospect of generous rewards that might elevate their living standards. Yun Tang's eyes lit up with hope at the prospect of generous rewards, dreaming of the possibility that they could enjoy a weekly meat treat. Yun Chen playfully corrected her, promising daily feasts of meat. Yun Tang joyfully exclaimed, Meat, meat, meat. The ensuing days saw Yun Chen diligently training, accumulating skill points in preparation for college. Returning home after days of rigorous training, Yun Chen found his sister bursting with excitement. The results were out, and Yun Chen had emerged as the top scorer in Jiangnan province. Yun Tang, barely able to contain her joy, handed Yun Chen his buzzing phone. The missed calls from the headmaster prompted a scolding and an urgent request to visit the school that afternoon. The recruiters awaited, and it was time for Yun Chen to choose his preferred college, a moment filled with anticipation and hope. Three years ago, after being transported to the ice sky, Yun Chen faced a devastating reality during the ability testing day. His talent, supreme proficiency, was considered lousy, with the general belief that it could only marginally improve skill grades. Distraught, Yun Chen sat in the rain, contemplating his bleak future, when a sudden system notification interrupted his thoughts. The system promised to make him the strongest in the world and asked him to select a job, prompting Yun Chen to casually inquire if being jobless could be considered a job. To his surprise, the system confirmed his choice, marking the beginning of his unconventional journey. In the blink of an eye, three years passed, and Yun Chen emerged as the province's top scorer, pondering what rewards the system had in store for him. The system notification appeared, revealing that his talent, supreme proficiency, had ascended from B to A+. Additionally, he received the god-grade skilled Divine Flash, Tier S-, minus, a new talent, Super Regeneration, Tier S+, plus, a valuable S-tier item, Ink of Rebirth, and 50 attribute points and skill points each. Overwhelmed with joy, Yun Chen anticipated a significant boost in his combat level and recognized the potential of his upgraded skills. Excitedly, Yun Chen equipped the Ink of Rebirth, recognizing its value as a life-saving tool, and contemplated the applications of Super Regeneration and Divine Flash. The enhanced talent tier opened up new possibilities, surpassing some job-specific skills. Yun Chen felt confident in facing challenges with these newfound abilities, especially considering Super Regeneration's vitality boost and Divine Flash's spatial manipulation. Yun Tang, his sister, shared news of his achievements spreading throughout the world and various organizations offering funds. 
Yun Chen advised her to accept only the Ministry of Education support. Meanwhile, reporters swarmed East Cloud School, seeking information about Yun Chen, who attempted to elude them in a hoodie and sunglasses. In the meeting room at East Cloud School, recruiters from top universities gathered, but a representative from Qing the University, O oh Hua, expressed skepticism about Yun Chen's jobless status. O oh Hua demanded Yun Chen choose a job or be ineligible for Qing the University. Tensions rose as other recruiters defended Yun Chen, prompting a heated argument. Tian Yuan Zhou from Qing that questioned Yun Chen's character, claiming he exploited a loophole to secure his achievements. The headmaster intervened, asking the recruiters to cease their dispute. Yun Chen entered the room, offering to showcase his skills to dispel doubts. Ignoring introductions, Yun Chen faced Tian Yuan Zhou, challenging him to a duel. If Yun Chen failed to defeat him within five moves, it would be considered a loss. Tian Yuan Zhou couldn't fathom Yun Chen's confidence in defeating him within five moves but accepted the challenge nonetheless. The teacher, concerned about Qin Da's prestigious status and Tian Yuan Zhou's additional year of experience, urged Yun Chen to reconsider. Unyielding, Tian Yuan Zhou asserted that he had already committed to the challenge and couldn't retract. Heading to the gym, Ou Hua reminded Tian Yuan Zhou that mere victory by surviving Yun Chen's five moves wasn't sufficient. Tian Yuan Zhou boldly claimed he could secure victory in three moves. It was too late to intervene and the headmaster can only hope that Yun Chen can surprise them once again. The sword part of his interchangeable weapon was damaged, so he'd only be using it as a magic staff. As the duel commenced, Tian Yuan Zhou, a mage, doubted Yun Chen's ability to defeat him with magic skills. However, Yun Chen surprised him with a rapid fireball, demonstrating exceptional spellcasting speed. Struggling to respond, Tian Yuan Zhou activated a magic shield to counter the incoming attacks, only to be overwhelmed by a barrage of explosive fireballs. Yun Chen confidently declared victory, standing over the unconscious Tian Yuan Zhou. The swift and unexpected outcome astonished the teachers, who marveled at Yun Chen's casting speed and the potency of the purple fireball, now deemed to be at least B tier. Speculating on the upgraded supreme proficiency talent, the teachers recognized Yun Chen's potential as a genius. Recruiters from various universities sought to allure Yun Chen with enticing offers, while Ou Hua, remaining skeptical, departed angrily. Amid the negotiations, the recruiter from Jiangnan University presented a tempting offer, including a job-specific skill book, custom-made weapons, and the promise of more hidden class skill books based on Yun Chen's future achievements. This generous proposal left other recruiters astounded, and Yun Chen gladly accepted Jiangnan's offer, not just for its benefits but also for its proximity to home. In the park, Yun Chen tested his newly acquired divine flash skill, impressed by its speed but wary of its stamina draining effects. Checking his phone, he observed the generous funds from both Jiangnan University and the Ministry of Education entering his bank account. Anticipating more rewards at home, Yun Chen headed home and encountered a courier from Jiangnan University, who handed him a box containing the promised multiform weapon. As Yun Chen opened the box, a magnificent spear named Formation Breaker was unveiled before him, marking the culmination of his remarkable journey. Yun Chen grinned, his heart brimming with joy as he finally secured three gold grade weapons in one sweep. Now unburdened by the need to carry an arsenal for every battle, he extended gratitude to the courier who assured him that these weapons, long overlooked on the shelf, had found their rightful owner. The courier, confident in the equipment's durability, predicted Yun Chen would wield them for an extended period. The courier explained that generally, equipment are differentiated by its grades, starting from black metal, bronze, silver, gold, white gold, diamond and finally legendary. Within each grade there are also different star levels. It is also possible to use magic to increase the star levels to make the weapon stronger, but it comes at a risk as there is a higher chance of failure which may cause the weapon to drop its quality and may even break it. Beyond weaponry, the courier revealed a treasure trove of skill books, ensuring Yun Chen a wealth of learning opportunities. Overwhelmed by the multitude of skill books, Yun Chen's eyes glinted with anticipation. The courier promised more skill books available through the school library student points exchange system. As a final surprise, the courier bestowed upon Yun Chen the keys and deed to a new house, a gesture representing Dong Yun City. Yun Tang marveled at the house's size, urging Yun Chen to explore it together. However, Yun Chen, absorbed in his new skill books, declined, 
diving into the vast array of rare job skill books, like those for Wizard, Witcher, and Knight. As it turns out, the game, Temple of Legends, appeared out of nowhere 70 years ago and players had the choice to choose different races in the game. However, the players turned into their chosen races when the game world merged with reality. As time goes by, these non-human players married normal human players, resulting in unique mixed blood races. In addition, the game's job system, dungeons, NPC, and monsters were also brought into the real world. This caused the Earth to greatly increase its size and is no longer the same as before. Dongyun City is just a remote place and hence its citizens generally do not see the other races, Yunchen anticipates meeting even more races as he advanced to Jiangnan University. In the days preceding school, Yunchen balanced daily tasks, skill acquisition, and mastering his new weapon, Formation Breaker. Alongside these endeavors, he cherished moments with his sister. Time flew by and soon, Yun Chen bid farewell to his sister, heading to Jiangnan University. Upon arrival, the campus unfolded with a diverse community, and Yun Chen's status as the top scorer drew attention. Accompanied by an elf assisting with registration, Yun Chen marveled at the privileges granted to the top-ranked students, including a luxurious private dorm. The elf explained the five academies within Jiangnan University, each focusing on different aspects, the War Academy emphasized combat skills, the Elements Academy delved into magic teachings, the Tactics Academy focused on theory, the Weapons Academy taught weapon use and body strengthening, and the Support Academy honed skills like enchantment, blacksmithing, alchemy, and breeding. Overwhelmed by the choices, Yun Chen contemplated the suitability of each academy, unsure of his decision. As the elf guided him to his private dorm, Yun Chen was stunned by its size and amenities, a special privilege granted only to the top 50 students. The elf, aware of the envy he would face, cautioned him about potential challenges. As the system issued a mission to maintain his top spot, Yun Chen embraced the trials ahead with eagerness. The next day, at the student welcome ceremony, a group of new students gathered at the main square in front of the main building. As Yun Chen entered, whispers and jealous chatter swept through the crowd. Many doubted that he deserved the special treatment he was enjoying and were eager to challenge him. Shen Tai Ran, a male elf blood knight from Dezhou province, and a female Taoist priest from Dongling province, urged the crowd to stop their toothless barks and face Yun Chen if they believed they could beat him. Shui Hongfang, the second scorer of Jiangnan province, fumed at Yun Chen for taking the top spot he believed was rightfully his. Back in the main teaching building, the dean of the school of war noted the brewing tension among students, predicting a potential fight over the school ranking. Teachers discussed the students' discontent with Yun Chen's perceived preferential treatment as they suspected it was due to connections rather than merit. Dean Xia Qingqing of the Weapons Academy, known as the Ice Queen, acknowledged Yun Chen's combat prowess and expressed interest in having him as her student. Other teachers Surprised at Xia Qingqing's sudden interest, agreed that Yun Chen showed immense potential, sparking a competition among them to mentor him. Dean Yian Fu, amused by the teacher's eagerness, decided to expedite matters. In an instant, he teleported to the stage in front of the main square, revealing himself as the Dean of the War Academy. He acknowledged the students' unhappiness and proposed a competition among new students in the afternoon at Nanyun Square, a suggestion met with unanimous agreement. In the afternoon, students gathered in front of the three floating doors. Entrances to the Dungeons The sight of Silver Grade Dungeon entrances amazed them, confirming Jiangnan University's status as one of the top seven universities. These dungeon entrances, controlled by powerful organizations, symbolized the university's strength. Dean Yi and Fu announced a competition where students' dungeon performance would determine their student points. As the doors opened, the competition commenced. Yun Chen welcomed the challenge, unfazed by the students aiming to surpass him. As the students entered the Troll's Nest dungeon, Yun Chen wasted no time initiating his assault. Observing another student in a mecha suit, the teachers praised his performance, expecting a solo clear of the Nightmare dungeon. Dean Yi and Fu marveled at the high-quality students. When they switched back to Yun Chen's channel, they found he had already defeated all the monsters, leaving them wondering about the tactics and skills he employed. Dean Lian Hashuan explained Yun Chen's strategy of using the wizard's hurricane spell to gather monsters before unleashing fireball spells. Despite the apparent simplicity, his skill tier must be at least B to deal such damage. 
Deans of the Elements and War Academies discussed Yun Chen's suitability for their respective schools. As Yun Chen proceeded to the next stage in the dungeon, he encountered a swamp, quickly adapting his strategy to navigate the challenging terrain. In the heart of the enchanted forest, Yun Chen harnessed the power of his druidic skill, nature affinity. Unlike the typical skill, Yun Chen's mastery stood at an impressive B-plus tier, granting him a unique ability to communicate with the flora around him. The entire forest became an extension of his senses as all the plants became his eyes. Guided by this extraordinary skill, Yun Chen swiftly pinpointed the entrance to the next stage and dashed towards it. To navigate the challenging terrain, he unleashed a vine, swinging gracefully above the treacherous swamps. As he landed on solid ground, a lurking troll concealed above the trees attempted to ambush him. Undeterred, Yun Chen reacted with the precision of a seasoned druid. Aiming his magic staff, he cast a fireball skill, effortlessly eliminating the hidden threat. Enhanced by his nature affinity, Yun Chen detected other trolls concealed in the trees. Employing another druid skill, growth, he caused the surrounding trees to entangle the hidden trolls, draining their life force until they were sucked dry. Back in the office, the observing teacher marveled at Yun Chen's prowess. Surpassing even a beginner druid. This confirmation signaled that Yun Chen's innate talent had indeed undergone a significant upgrade. Dean Yi and Fu explained that the second stage aimed to assess perception, a vital attribute for survival in unknown battlegrounds. While various skills could enhance perception, the faculty was particularly impressed with Yun Chen's instinctive decision to employ druidic skills tailored for the stage. Some students opted for destructive skills to obliterate everything in their path, but Yun Chen continued with ease through the swamp. Reaching the entrance guarded by a slumbering giant troll. As the troll stirred, Yun Chen unleashed a colossal purple fireball, propelling the creature through the gate into the next room. Panic-stricken, the troll knelt before the troll chief, seeking redemption for failing to guard the gate. In a surprising twist, Yun Chen confronted the troll, questioning its intentions to redeem itself by killing humans. Declaring that he would grant the ultimate redemption, Yun Chen swiftly attacked the troll, causing it to cry out in pain. The enraged troll chief witnessed a mere human eliminate its subordinate. Utilizing the general skill identification, Yun Chen analyzed the stats of the monsters in the room, realizing the challenge posed by their overwhelming numbers. Bracing himself for the imminent battle, Yun Chen prepared to face the formidable foes that lay ahead. As Yun Chen faced the imposing troll chief, the monstrous creature swung its giant hammer, violently smashing Yun Chen to the ground. To the chief's surprise, another Yun Chen appeared beside him, wearing an expression of fear. Confused but alive, the chief deduced that Yun Chen must have employed a cloning skill. Determined to eliminate the threat, the troll chief embarked on a relentless killing spree, annihilating the clones surrounding him. Suddenly, a massive purple fireball descended behind the chief, engulfing a group of clones. Intrigued. The chief discovered a troll wizard responsible for the fiery assault and commended the creature for its performance. Promising a promotion to squad leader after the battle if the wizard could kill Yun Chen, the chief and the wizard collaborated to eliminate the remaining clones. As the number of clones dwindled to one, the chief believed he had located the real Yun Chen. Approaching the seemingly terrified Yun Chen, the chief prepared to end his adversary's life. However, the chief's perception faltered as the illusion began to dissipate. Revealing the true identity of the remaining clone, it was one of his troll subordinates. In a swift and calculated move, a purple fireball descended upon the deceived troll, sealing its fate. Yun Chen expressed his expectation that the illusion would endure longer but attributed its brevity to the chief's boss-level status. Grateful for the chief inadvertently saving him time, Yun Chen confronted the disoriented chief, who was bewildered by the sight of his fallen troll subordinates. The teaching staff observed the chaos and questioned why the chief had turned against his own kind. Realizing Yun Chen's strategic use of the Yin Yang master's primary skill, confusion, they acknowledged that the Fuso country's unique profession wielded the power to induce hallucinations in enemies' minds. Typically ineffective against higher-leveled foes, Yun Chen's elevated skill tier allowed the confusion skill to prevail. Additionally, Yun Chen strategically provoked the chief by killing the first troll gatekeeper, amplifying the success rate of the skill. Impressed by Yun Chen's strategic acumen, the teachers now pondered his next move as the illusion dissipated. Leaving the battlefield in suspense. 
As the troll chief, infuriated by Yun Chen's cunning tactics, lunged toward him, cursing his despicable actions, he suddenly found himself stepping on a concealed mine. The explosive device detonated upon impact, engulfing the chief in a burst of destructive force. Emerging from the blast, the chief, undeterred and still seething with rage, continued to hurl curses at Yun Chen. Unfazed, Yun Chen revealed that he had meticulously prepared for the troll chief's every move while under the illusion, ensuring the chief would never reach him. Yun Chen unleashed a barrage of various skills, bombarding the chief relentlessly. Despite withstanding these formidable attacks, the chief displayed resilience as he closed the distance between himself and Yun Chen, leaving an impression on the young warrior. Yun Chen skillfully dodged the chief's attacks, maneuvering to his back and concluding the battle with a series of slashing strikes using the skill, air strikes. The system notification promptly congratulated Yun Chen for successfully completing the dungeon. The teaching staff marveled at Yun Chen's mastery of traps. A skill often deemed challenging or overlooked by many. His adept usage and understanding of traps proved to be an eye-opening spectacle for the onlooking teachers. Dean Yin Fu expressed his satisfaction, noting that most individuals were still navigating the intricacies of the second stage. He anticipated that Yun Chen would effortlessly maintain his top position. Meanwhile, Dean Xia Qingqing expressed her delight at having such a promising student in her academy. However, Dean Yin Fu made it clear that they wouldn't relinquish Yun Chen without a fight. The two deans exchanged stern glares, each vying to claim Yun Chen as their own. Surrounding teachers observed the heated competition between the deans, questioning the haste with which they contended for Yun Chen. The anticipation lingered as the teachers awaited Yun Chen's decision. In the aftermath of successfully clearing the dungeon, Yun Chen eagerly perused his hard-earned rewards. Among the spoils were the usual experience, attribute, and skill points, accompanied by a remarkable gold two-star storm axe. Additionally, he acquired the prestigious title of Troll Exterminator. The surge of joy washed over him as he witnessed his levels skyrocketing by three, bringing him to a formidable level 16. As the pioneer to conquer the dungeon, Yun Chen was granted the privilege of choosing a new talent. After careful consideration, he opted for dual casting, deeming it the most fitting for his versatile skill set. A radiant light enveloped him upon selecting the talent, signifying the acquisition of this newfound ability. Just as Yun Chen prepared to depart, an uncharted portal materialized before him, absent from the dungeon records. Brimming with excitement, he speculated that this mysterious gateway might lead to the fabled secret level. Legends spoke of certain conditions triggering the appearance of an elusive secret level, harboring peculiar monsters that, if defeated, bestowed generous rewards. Eager to explore this uncharted territory and still brimming with energy, Yun Chen made the spontaneous decision to plunge into the secret level. Meanwhile, Shui Hongfang, having successfully cleared the dungeon, emerged with a sense of accomplishment. Convinced he had outpaced Yun Chen, he reveled in the belief of being the first to finish. Shen Tairan from the Zhou province followed as the second to exit, receiving congratulations from Shui Hongfang. Shen Tairan, however, expressed surprise at Yun Chen's absence and entertained doubts about the young warrior's capabilities. As more students completed their dungeons and gathered in the main square, shock rippled through the crowd at Yun Chen's conspicuous absence from the top ten rankings. A keen observer noticed on the screen that Yun Chen was still within the dungeon but in an unfamiliar section. It soon dawned on everyone that Yun Chen had not only completed the dungeon but ventured into the secretive domain of the secret level. Despite the revelation, Shui Hongfang clung to skepticism, accusing Yun Chen of cheating. Dean Yi and Fu intervened urging everyone to remain silent and await the official results. He promptly ordered the screen off, deeming Yun Chen's encounter with the secret level unsuitable for public viewing. Within the secret level, Yun Chen found himself in a modest room housing only a scarecrow. Sensing an oddity, he maintained vigilance as the scarecrow stirred to life and advanced toward him. With weapon drawn and the intention to summon water elementals, Yun Chen aimed to test the scarecrow's capabilities. The scarecrow, displaying extraordinary speed, charged at Yun Chen, who adeptly dodged using the divine flash skill. To Yun Chen's surprise, the scarecrow seized strands of his hair and commenced absorption. Realizing the scarecrow's true objective, Yun Chen resolved to conclude the battle swiftly. Moving in for a fiery punch, he found himself thrown against the wall, perplexed as to why his own skill rebounded. 
Observing the scarecrow metamorphose into a cursed clone, Yun Chen grasped the cruel reality that any damage inflicted upon the clone manifested on his main body. Struggling to mitigate the clone's self inflicted harm, Yun Chen grappled with the unfolding challenge. The clone's actions intensified, delivering blows that tested Yun Chen's resilience. Yet, amidst the chaos, Yun Chen discerned a weakness in the clone's strength, sparking the genesis of a strategic plan to conquer this unforeseen adversary. As the intense battle unfolded on the screen, Dean Yi and Fu acknowledged the formidable challenge that lay ahead for Yun Chen. However, Dean Xia Qingcheng, attuned to the subtleties, detected a calm resolve in Yun Chen's eyes, expressing confidence in his ability to overcome any obstacles. Contrary to Yun Chen's initial assumption, the Scarecrow did not tether its life to Yun Chen's, instead, both entities shared the consequences of any damage, resulting in mutual injuries. Acting promptly, Yun Chen healed a wound on his arm. Observing the discrepancy, he contemplated the anomaly, Despite his level 16 stats, the Scarecrow's healing seemed limited to its right arm even though it should have been healed fully, giving the false impression that it had somehow inherited Yun Chen's statistics. To confirm this anomaly, Yun Chen conducted a self-inflicted test by smashing his elbow against the wall. While it caused him no harm, the Scarecrow cried out in pain, proving that it did not inherit Yun Chen's full stats. With the revelation that damages suffered by either body were mirrored by the other, Yun Chen seized the strategic advantage. Anticipating the Scarecrow's inability to endure the inflicted damage, he unleashed the fireball skill on himself, reducing the Scarecrow to ashes. As the flames subsided, a small Scarecrow tool emerged, serving as the reward for clearing this unique stage. Yun Chen, recognizing its potential usefulness, picked up the tool and examined its effects. Back in the main square, impatience and frustration echoed among the students as they awaited the conclusion of Yun Chen's battle. Upon Yun Chen's return, his casual inquiry about the lingering crowd's purpose was met with anger and frustration. Realizing he hadn't received his rewards from the system, Yun Chen speculated that the competition might not be over yet. Dean Yi and Fu emerged to disclose a shocking revelation, someone among the students had cheated, obtaining advanced knowledge of the competition to make strategic preparations. Speculations ran wild, with suspicions of connections and privileged information. Shui Hongfang's guilt-ridden expression betrayed his involvement in the cheating. Dean Yi and Fu's authoritative command silenced the crowd as he proposed a solution to unveil the cheater, 1v1 fights. Tall pillars emerged, forming arenas for individual combat, with the rule that victors would claim all the student points of the defeated. The atmosphere became charged as students embraced the opportunity to showcase their true capabilities. Yun Chen, realizing the competition wasn't concluded, leaped onto the arena platforms, inviting anyone with grievances to challenge him. Two challengers swiftly accepted, irritated by Yun Chen's perceived arrogance. Proposing to fight them simultaneously, Yun Chen demonstrated his confidence. Executing a powerful stomp using Stampede, Yun Chen displayed the might of a mere fighter's basic skill. The judge activated a shield skill to contain the impact, sparing the surrounding students from the shockwave. Witnessing the staggering damage inflicted, the audience marveled at Yun Chen's prowess. As the challengers lay unconscious, Yun Chen queried the judge about continuing the fight. The judge declared the match over, and Yun Chen calmly approached the platform's edge. Challenging the students below, who is next? The stage was set for Yun Chen to face successive opponents and assert his dominance in the arena. Yun Chen stood triumphantly atop the arena, challenging the crowd to send forth their next contender. A hushed murmur enveloped the audience as they deliberated on the astonishing display they had just witnessed. The power behind Yun Chen's stampede skill left them in awe, sparking doubts about whether he was the actual cheater in their midst. Conversations rippled through the onlookers as they contemplated Yun Chen's unparalleled strength and how he secured the top position. Many questioned if anyone would dare challenge him now. In an unexpected turn, Shen Tai Ran, the secret of blood knight from the Zhou province, stepped forward to confront Yun Chen. Following suit, Nicole, a moon elf swordsman of noble stature, also threw down the gauntlet. The rumors of her being a moon elf, with elevated attributes and an Esther awakened talent, added another layer of intrigue to the impending showdown. Both Tai Ran and Nicole wanted the first shot at Yun Chen, but he confidently asserted his ability to face them simultaneously. Tai Ran, incensed by Yun Chen's claim, entered the arena armed with his shield and lance.
setting the stage for a clash between a top-tier job and a basic jobless class. Dini and Fu observed the match, contemplating the dynamics of Yun Chen's basic class facing off against a formidable opponent. Tyron's attacks were potent, pushing the judge's shield to its limits and even cracking it. However, Yun Chen's adept dodging showcased his remarkable agility. Tyron's movements were precise, following a structured pattern that limited Yun Chen's options. Despite the seemingly flawless execution, Yun Chen countered with fireballs, engaging Tyran in a verbal exchange about the limits of his defense. Summoning vines, Yun Chen restrained Tyran, who remained confident in his impervious defense. In a strategic move, Yun Chen used growth on the vines, enhancing their strength and vitality absorption. As Tyran attempted to counter with blood flame attacks, Yun Chen countered with water curtain, drowning the flames and fortifying the vines. Tyran found himself ensnared, realizing he might be drained of vitality. In a desperate move, Tyran unleashed his secret skill, blood escape, morphing into a form of liquid blood and quickly materialized behind Yun Chen and launched a direct charge. However, Yun Chen anticipated the attack and blocked Tyran's lance with his spear, stunning Tyran with his unexpected strength. Yun Chen swiftly turned the tables, demonstrating strength and defense comparable to Tyran's Blood Knight abilities. Tyran persistently unleashed a barrage of thrust attacks at Yun Chen, who effortlessly parried each one. Undeterred, Tyran thrust with increased power, believing Yun Chen couldn't possibly block it. However, Yun Chen displayed remarkable agility deftly maneuvering to intercept Tyron's lance with his legs and swiftly swung his spear in a sweeping motion, connecting with Tyron's face and sending him sprawling. Tyran defiantly declared that Yun Chen wouldn't receive another chance like that. However, before he could conclude his sentence, a dagger was deftly placed at his throat, revealing that Yun Chen had silently approached from behind. The match concluded with Yun Chen's victory, graciously accepted by Tyran. The judge declared Yun Chen the winner awarding him Tyron's 2,000 student points. Witnessing Yun Chen's prowess, the audience transformed into fervent fans, affectionately dubbing him, Bossman. Yi and Fu acknowledged Tai Ran's strength but noted the absence of textbooks providing guidance on facing an unconventional jobless master like Yun Chen. Nicole, the next challenger, entered the arena, emphasizing her agility advantage. Yun Chen, undeterred, welcomed the challenge, setting the stage for the unfolding battle. In the arena, an unconventional clash unfolded between Yun Chen, a jobless class wielding a spear, and Nicole, an elite moon elf with a formidable bloodline. Despite the apparent mismatch, the audience, having witnessed Yun Chen's recent triumph over a blood knight, refrained from predicting the outcome of this intriguing encounter. Nicole, displaying sportsmanship, offered Yun Chen a chance to rest after his previous battle. Yun Chen, declining the offer, prepared for the impending challenge. Nicole, without hesitation, charged towards Yun Chen, determined to give her best without exploiting any advantage. Analyzing the situation, Yun Chen noted the advantage of his spear's extended reach if Nicole closed the distance. However, Nicole surprised him by unleashing a devastating surge of sword energy, expanding her attack range. With waves of sword energy slashing at Yun Chen's shield, the crowd marveled at Nicole's strength, destabilizing Yun Chen's defense. Acknowledging Nicole's strategic approach, Yun Chen maintained his composure, adeptly dodging her attacks. Nicole, confident in her expanded attack range, commented on Yun Chen's reliance on speed. She decided to further enhance her strategy by widening the range of her sword energy attacks, aiming to eliminate Yun Chen's dodging space within the confined arena. Seizing the opportunity, Yun Chen exploited Nicole's focus on expanding her attack range, sliding toward her and summoning his double eagle pistols. Despite their lower damage, the pistols served as a distraction, allowing Yun Chen to close the distance. Launching his dagger at Nicole, he highlighted the flaw in her strategy, emphasizing her vulnerability in close combat. Nicole, countering Yun Chen's close quarters assault, unleashed her hidden skill, Silver Moonlight, creating a shockwave that sent Yun Chen flying. While effective, the skill drained much of her energy, leaving her momentarily weakened. Seizing this chance, Yun Chen employed a cunning tactic. As Nicole prepared to finish the fight with an arrow, Yun Chen's body disappeared, revealing it to be a clone. The real Yun Chen had silently approached from behind, placing a dagger at Nicole's throat. Admitting defeat, Nicole conceded her 1500 points to Yun Chen, marking her first loss to someone her own age. Observing Nicole's skill, 
Dean Xia Qingcheng expressed interest in having her as a student. Some teachers remained skeptical about the jobless class's future but agreed to monitor Yun Chen's progress, acknowledging the potential for surprises on his unconventional path. Facing the spectators, Yun Chen challenged anyone else in the crowd. Frustrated by his perceived arrogance, a group of students accepted his offer, challenging him as a collective force. Yun Chen responded with an illumination skill, blinding his opponents, and swiftly followed up with a barrage of fireballs, effortlessly defeating the group and showcasing his prowess to the intrigued onlookers. In a stunning display of skill, Yun Chen emerged victorious in the competition, showcasing powerful mastery, strategic acumen, and exceptional combat abilities. His remarkable performance garnered admiration, turning envy into worship among his fellow students. Soon, Yun Chen became known as Boss Man Yun, earning the undisputed first position. The screen displayed the official results, with Yun Chen securing the top spot, followed by Tai Ran, Nicole, and Yi Qing Ling in the subsequent positions. As the rewards rolled in, Yun Chen received mission rewards for maintaining his first position, including an S-tier skill, Invincible, and the coveted Lucky Potion. The acquisition of another life-saving skill like Invincible suggested the system's protective inclination towards Yun Chen. However, the crowd's attention shifted to Shui Hongfang, the original second-place contender, now relegated to rank 26th. After a swift defeat by Tyran exposed Shui Hongfang's abilities as the suspected cheater, it prompted more challengers against him, causing him to be relegated to the current rank. Dean Yi and Fu declared the competition over, urging everyone to accept the results. The next phase involved sorting students into different academies. Yi and Fu emphasized the focus on war and fighting in the War Academy, advising students without a killing instinct to explore alternative options. Introducing the new weapons academy dean, Xia Qingcheng, known as the Ice Queen, the youngest dean in history with a formidable reputation. Xia Qingcheng herself extended an invitation to Yun Chen, a rare gesture, followed by offers from Yi and Fu and Lian Hashuan of the Element Academy. Both academies presented tempting rewards, but the true surprise came from Xia Qingcheng, revealing an S++ tier artifact, the Demon Lord Essence. The Demon Lord Essence, obtained from a Demon Lord's body through the legendary Rift, promised enhanced fitness, increased attribute and skill points, and the chance to acquire a Demon Lord bloodline's talents. The crowd was awestruck by the priceless artifact, and Yun Chen found himself torn between the two compelling offers. Xia Qingcheng offered the Demon Lord Essence to Yun Chen if he joined the Weapons Academy. A proposition too enticing to refuse. The decision was made, and Yun Chen chose the Weapons Academy. Upon reaching the Weapons Academy's office building, Yun Chen encountered Nicole, also selected by Qingcheng but remained cold and distant. The revelation left Nicole astonished, realizing she had lost to someone seemingly cold and distant. Qingqing's assistant welcomed them, emphasizing that they should treat each other well as Qingqing's direct apprentices. Transported to Qingqing's private vault filled with weapons and artifacts, Yun Chen marveled at the impressive collection, including a vast array of demon bones. Qingqing greeted them, preparing to fulfill her promise by presenting the Demon Lord's Essence to Yun Chen as the time for Yun Chen to absorb the Demon Lord's Essence has come. Before Yun Chen embarked on absorbing the Demon Lord Essence, he sought confirmation from Qingqing regarding the rumors of her slaying the Demon Lord to acquire this precious essence. To his surprise, she affirmed that all the rumors were true. The Demon Lord, known as the Night Queen, fell by her hand, and the essence was obtained by a god-level alchemist who refined it from the corpse. Recognizing the need for context on Demon Lords, Qingqing decided to provide Yun Chen with a comprehensive explanation. She emphasized the existence of the Dark World. A realm teeming with demons that invaded their world through rifts. Contrary to the monsters descending from the game world, these demons posed a more profound threat. Yun Chen, perplexed, questioned how the human had a recipe for creating the Demon Lord's essence if they are so powerful and mysterious. Qing Qing explained that the Demon Lord essence wasn't created by humans but was a gift from the gods. She clarified that the gods' game was crafted by the gods, and humans, too, were their creation. Communication with the gods occurred through a ritual offering. Essentially a transaction. When humans offered something valuable, like demon bodies from the rift, the gods would respond by providing valuable items, including the demon lord essence. 
This ritual offering could yield various items such as hidden job paths, potions, magical equipment, and skill books. This concept of a ritual offering was entirely new to Yun Qin. It underscored that demon lords pose the most significant threat to humans. Qin Cheng then urged Yun Qin to absorb the demon lord essence whenever he felt ready. Hinting at the slim chance of acquiring the Night Queen's bloodline talents, a prospect that intrigued him. Requesting an hour of rest, Yun Chen retreated to Qingqing's office. While in the office, Yun Chen encountered a small phoenix, presumably the beast contracted with Dean Xiao. Attempting to analyze the creature, he found its stats too high to be visible. Soon after, servants, visibly of the demon race, arrived to offer their assistance as guests of Master Xia Qingqing. Yun Chen was astonished to discover that the servants were of the demon race. In Xianlong country, Equality regardless of race is mandated, except for permitted contracts with demons, non-residents, or those from the rift. Yun Chen speculated that these servants were likely demons from the rift as they soon left him to rest. Yun Chen, realizing the essence's value and the precious bloodline talents at stake, decided to use the lucky potion to enhance his chances. An hour later, he returned to the office, where Qin Cheng prepared him for the intense and painful absorption process. As Yun Chen began the absorption, an overwhelming surge of energy coursed through him. To alleviate the pain, Qing Qing infused some of her own energy into Yun Chen's body. However, an unexpected interruption occurred when Kathy and Nicole opened the office door, catching them in an awkward position before hastily closing it. To his surprise, Yun Chen's super regeneration talent automatically kicked in, eliminating the pain swiftly. Qing Qing, fearing the essence might be fake, was astonished at how quickly it concluded. Yun Chen noticed a significant improvement in his attributes and revealed that he had obtained both bloodline talents, Eye of Darkness and Dark Knight. Albeit at lower tiers. Qing Qing expressed surprise at Yun Chen's exceptional ability to absorb the essence. Yun Chen, attributing it to luck and discreetly omitting the lucky potion's effects. He had also observed Qing Qing's care for him and vowed to repay Qing Qing's kindness. She instructed him to address her as teacher and informed him of monthly tests, with failures incurring punishments. In a hidden cave within the rift, a chained demon lord seethed with anger as a human dared to steal the Night Queen's powers. His loyal follower in a red cape reassured him, pledging to kill the human and offer their heart in return. The demon lord, holding the essence of the god of war, promised to reward the follower upon success. The following day, Yun Chen eagerly tested his newfound talents in his room. Utilizing the eyes of darkness, he successfully froze a plate mid-air, realizing the incredible power of this talent. Recollecting Qin Cheng's mention of the talent evolving to Tier S+, he envisioned its potential to freeze time within its range, surpassing other Tier S+, talents. As Yun Chen made his way to class, he encountered the two demon servants who, still embarrassed from the previous day's misunderstanding, hastily ran away. Wondering if the lucky potion influenced this, Yun Chen pondered if the misunderstanding might actually work in his favor. Throughout the day, Yun Chen experienced an unusual stroke of luck, finding money on the ground and winning lucky prizes wherever he went. Recognizing the potency of his luck, he decided to maximize its benefits. After completing his daily tasks, he decided to test his luck on the third random reward, hoping for high-quality enchanting materials. To his delight, he obtained the S-tier enchanting material, Dragon's Blood, reaffirming the Lucky Potion's effectiveness in enchanting. As Yun Chen hurriedly exited his final class, Nicole observed his haste and decided to follow him, grappling with the mixed emotions of rivalry and attraction. They arrived at the enchantment hall, where Yun Chen intended to enchant his equipment. Nicole reminded him of the potential risks and benefits of enchanting, especially the possibility of equipment breaking upon failure. Undeterred, Yun Chen purchased a variety of enchanting materials and spent over 3,000 points. When offered assistance from a skilled enchanter, he declined and proceeded to enchant his formation breaker weapon. As the enchanting platform emitted a bright purple light, signifying success at 7 stars, Nicole cautioned against proceeding further as she warned about the 1% success rate for reaching 8 stars. Yun Chen, however, persisted, enchanting the weapon to 8 stars successfully. The crowd watched nervously as the newly enhanced formation breaker, now stronger than some diamond-grade equipment, emerged from the platform, incorporating the effects of dragon's blood. Just as Yun Chen prepared to leave, 
a tall figure appeared behind him, offering to buy the equipment at three times the market price. However, Yun Chen asked what will happen if he refused to sell. Surrounded by curious onlookers, comments circulated about Yun Chen's apparent new student status, evident from his lack of knowledge about Lin Lei. Lin Lei, known for his bad temper and dragon bloodline, was a formidable figure as a member of the student union. It was common knowledge that Lin Lei was not one to be offended. Nicole sighed silently, understanding that these seniors were unaware of Yun Chen's prowess displayed during the new student ceremony. She was confident that they stood no chance against him. Lin Lei persisted in urging Yun Chen to name a price for the powerful gold weapon, emphasizing the privileges Yun Chen would gain from this deal. In response, Yun Chen slammed his spear on the ground, unleashing the aura of his new skill, deterrence. Lin Lei, affected by the skill due to his dragon bloodline, began to experience fear. Yun Chen approached him, questioning what Lin Lei would do if he refused to sell the weapon. Overwhelmed by fear, Lin Lei fell to the ground, pleading with Yun Chen to spare him, much to the shock of the crowd. Unperturbed by Lin Lei's pleas, Yun Chen left the hall, intending to make the most of the lucky potion's lingering effects. Nicole, intrigued by his recent enchantment success, decided to follow him. Yun Chen proceeded to the library, aiming to explore valuable skill books with the aid of the lucky potion. In the library, Yun Chen discovered hidden gems, druid and shadow assassin skill books. These were rare finds, particularly the druid skills that were only available in the university due to its rarity. Yun Chen diligently learned two practical shadow assassin skills, namely shadow escape and shadow steal, expanding his already formidable skill set. Satisfied with his findings, he made his way to the beast taming grounds. Once there, Yun Chen's eyes fell upon a seemingly insignificant small griffin tucked away in a corner. Relying on his current streak of good fortune, he decided that this peculiar creature would be the perfect addition to his arsenal. The shop owner explained that this griffin had garnered no interest for the past three weeks and was slated for disposal. Yun Chen, unswayed by appearances, happily purchased it for a mere 100 points. Nicole, bewildered by Yun Chen's unconventional choices, questioned his decision making. However, Yun Chen's gamble paid off when he fed the creature a super supplement purchased earlier, causing it to undergo a remarkable mutation and evolve into a formidable giant griffin. The transformation left both the shop owner and Nicole astounded. Naming his newfound mount Xiao Han, Yun Chen, with Nicole as his companion, ventured next to the summoned beast training ground. Given the late hour, only the plant warehouse remained open. Yun Chen, with a penchant for druid skills, sought a plant-based summoned beast. He settled on a gold-graded thorn flower demon, despite its inherent weaknesses and stunted growth. The storekeeper explained its less than impressive grade due to poor aptitude and the extensive care it required. Nevertheless, Yun Chen saw potential in the creature and promptly purchased it along with three months worth of food rations. As the day concluded, Nicole approached Yun Chen with a favor to ask. Jokingly referring to her as a stalker for the day, Yun Chen inquired about her needs. Nicole, having lost a substantial portion of her student points to Yun Chen after her defeat, requested to borrow some points. Demonstrating unexpected generosity, Yun Chen readily agreed, leaving Nicole both surprised and appreciative of his character. Three months later, within the office of Dean Yi, also serving as the vice-principal of Jiangnan University, discussions were underway regarding the progress of the new batch of Year 1 students. The teacher's report conveyed that the students, while generally independent, seemed lacking in sociability, which she attributed to the fierce competition among them. When Dean Yi and Fu specifically inquired about Yun Chen, the teacher revealed that he had excelled in all job classes, consistently ranking at the top, but noted his unsociable behavior, with limited interactions mostly restricted to Nicole. Concerned about Yun Chen's solitary nature, Dini and Fu expressed the importance of teamwork and collaboration, emphasizing that the fate of many top performers often took a dark turn due to a lack of these skills. The teacher concurred, underlining the significance of the upcoming Freshman Exchange Competition, an annual event designed to foster teamwork among students. Realizing the importance of the gathering, Dini and Fu decided it was time to assemble the top 20 students. Meanwhile, Back at the bow and crossbow training grounds, Yun Chen and Nicole found themselves engaged in a friendly competition. Yun Chen's exceptional skills were on full display as he effortlessly dodged Nicole's arrows and countered with precision. The addition of tracking to his arrows made it challenging for Nicole to evade his attacks. 
Even though Nicole attempted to hide behind trees, Yun Chen's arrows proved too accurate, with one piercing through a tree just above her head, prompting her to admit defeat. Spectators marveled at Yun Chen's prowess, acknowledging his excellence across various classes. Nicole, in acknowledgement of Yun Chen's rapid improvement in just three months, playfully lamented that she had forced him into betting for every competition, resulting in him treating her to lunch consistently. Yun Chen, in turn, complained about this arrangement, and Nicole reminded him of the honor it was to treat her. Their playful banter was interrupted when a teacher appeared, summoning them to Dean Ye's office. Within the office, Dean Ye addressed the top 20 students, informing them about the upcoming student exchange competition. Nicole elaborated on the competition's national significance, encompassing individual and team events, alongside the addition of a new survival test. The system issued Yun Chen a mission related to the competition, solidifying his participation. As the vice principal, Dean Yi announced his intention to lead them to the competition venue, where the survival test required the participation of all 20 students. He emphasized the need to accumulate points by engaging with monsters, finding resources, and enduring harsh conditions. Acknowledging Yun Chen as the top scorer, Dean Yi designated him as the leader for the team competition, with Shen Tai Ran and Nicole representing the university in the individual competition. However, Dean Yi expressed concern about Yun Chen's ability to lead the team due to his solitary nature and versatile job status. Undeterred, Yun Chen confidently volunteered to decide the team composition, and Dean Yi, recognizing Yun Chen's strengths, agreed, prompting Yun Chen to submit his team selection. Upon reviewing Yun Chen's chosen team, Dean Yi was infuriated. The team, lacking diversity, featured three melee fighters, one priest, one summoner, and one assassin, with no mage. This deviation from the traditional 2-2-1-2 formation raised concerns about the team's effectiveness. The teacher explained that Yun Chen's jobless class and versatility might be a reason for this team strategy and Dean Yi reluctantly decided to test out his team and assigned an instructor to coach them. Despite objections and concerns by his teammates, Yun Chen defended his choices asserting that he had specific reasons behind his selections. In response to the commotion, an instructor named Wei Yu entered the scene, criticizing Yun Chen's team composition. He suggested the inclusion of Shui Hong, a fire mage, to address the lack of fire magic damage. However, the students, including Lin Yu Su, expressed skepticism about Shui Hong's abilities and accused the instructor of favoritism. Unfazed by the objections, Yun Chen coldly questioned the consequences if he rejected Shui Hong from his team. Wei Yu, in an angry tone, asserted his authority as their instructor, insisting that Shui Hong Fang must be added to the team. However, Lin Yu Su vehemently opposed the idea, stating that Yun Chen was already a superior mage, rendering the addition of a weaker one unnecessary. Shui Hong Fang defended his ranking, attributing it to consecutive fights, and slammed his new diamond grade staff on the ground, challenging them to a fight to prove his abilities. With a new diamond grade staff in hand, Shui Hong Fang's wealth became apparent to the crowd. Despite his unimpressive ranking, his expensive weapon indicated significant financial backing. Instructor Wei Yu, determined to include Shui Hong Fang, demanded the substitution of one warrior for him. Yun Chen, unimpressed by Shui Hong Fang's character, continued to reject the proposal. Yun Chen challenged them to a fight, stating that if they won, Yun Chen would have to accept him. Wei Yu gladly accepted the challenge, confident in his capabilities, and arranged the match to take place in the arena three hours later. News of the impending clash spread across the school, drawing a large crowd to witness the confrontation. Some spectators noted the potential unfairness of including a year two student, Qian Ruizong, from the previous championship team in Wei Yu's lineup. As the arena filled with enthusiastic spectators, discussions among Yun Chen's team members revolved around the impending match. Fei Ching analyzed the opponent's likely 2 2 1 2 formation, expressing concerns about breaking through their defense. Shen Tai Ran offered his assistance for both defense and attack, relying on his blood escape skill. Yun Chen confidently dismissed the need for a strategy, asserting that they would add up during the battle. Both Nicole and Lin Yu Su expressed confidence in Yun Chen's leadership. The judge anticipated an opportunity to observe Yun Chen's team in action, recognizing the significance of the match in determining the acceptance of Yun Chen's team formation. With the announcement that the battle would commence, expectations ran high. 
True to expectations, the opponents established their 2-2-1-2 formation. Wei Yu, observing the seemingly reckless charge from Yun Chen's team, felt confident in their ability to withstand the assault. He commanded his mages to launch attacks but was faced with a barrage of fireballs and had to respond with magic shields. Yun Chen exploited the distraction, charging towards the enemy's front line. His vines ensnared the opposing priest, rendering her unable to provide buffs. Executing swift and precise attacks, Yun Chen sent one tank flying out of the battlefield with a powerful thrust of his spear. Dodging the other tank's shield bash effortlessly, Yun Chen countered with a series of fireballs that overwhelmed the opposing mages. Switching to the sword form, he swiftly dispatched the remaining tank. In less than three seconds, Yun Chen had eliminated half of the opponent's team, leaving the crowd in awe. As the rest of Yun Chen's team caught up, they realized the match was almost over. Charging towards the remaining opponent, Wei Yu frantically instructed Qian Rui Zong to summon creatures to protect the priest. However, Yun Chen, smiling confidently, declared his specialty in fighting monsters like those. The crowd engaged in discussions as they observed the summoned creatures, all of which were platinum grade and above level 20. Qian Rui Zong, the powerful summoner, received recognition for his extraordinary creatures. Wei Yu, displaying arrogance, asserted that these creatures could easily defeat Yun Chen. However, as the battle unfolded, Rui Zong grew nervous, realizing that his creatures hesitated to approach Yun Chen, who exhibited greater strength. Noticing the reluctance of the summoned creatures, Yun Chen took the initiative. He engaged the lion first, matching its strength effortlessly. When the serpent attacked, Yun Chen skillfully deflected its advances. Handling all three monsters simultaneously, Yun Chen proved their inferiority. Qian Rui Zong, now anxious, pleaded with Yun Chen not to harm his companions, arguing that the team competition required teamwork rather than solo performances. In response, Yun Chen denied it being a solo performance and called on his teammates to showcase their skills. Fei Cheng, the shadow assassin, emerged from Yun Chen's shadow and targeted the opposing priest. Wei Yu attempted to defend, but Tai Ran utilized his blood escape skill, launching a surprise attack that sent Wei Yu flying into the walls. Meanwhile, Nicole, using her forbidden spell, Arrows, disabled Rui Zong, preventing him from casting spells. Having defeated the summoned creatures, Yun Chen casually inquired about gaining experience and resources from killing them. Rui Zong, desperate to save his companions, offered to return any favors received. Wei Yu, refusing to admit defeat, burst out of the wall but was instantly defeated by Nicole. She declared that he was unfit to challenge their team leader, Yun Chen. The teacher reported the match results, acknowledging that while the team lacked a specific strategy, they utilized overwhelming strength to secure victory. Yi and Fu expressed concern about facing other top universities without a concrete strategy and questioned Yun Chen's rationale for the unconventional team composition. Yun Chen explained that opponents would likely spend considerable time analyzing and countering the three-time championship 2-2-1-2 formation. Furthermore, lacking a strong mage this year, adhering to the traditional formation would diminish their overall strength. Yi and Fu, unable to find faults in Yun Chen's reasoning, allowed him to make the decisions. Yun Tang, expressing gratitude, promised to perform well in the upcoming high school exams. Yun Chen, hopeful that she would join the same school, offered to take care of her. However, their conversation was interrupted by a knock on the door. The two demon servants, now named Xiao Yu and Xiao Ling, informed Yun Chen that their master, Xia Qingcheng, had arranged a special class for him, cancelling his lessons for the rest of the day. Prepared to move out, Yun Chen wondered about their teleportation skill, given the absence of wands. Transported to a dark and eerie forest, Yun Chen felt an unsettling pressure. Qing Cheng revealed that the day's class involved a single mission, to survive in this ominous place until noon. In the eerie forest, Yun Chen sensed the evil intent and countless eyes fixed on him. Qing Cheng revealed that the monsters, tainted by darkness, coveted the remaining demon lord essence in Yun Chen's body. Desiring to consume him and evolve with the essence, they closed in. Qing Cheng emphasized the necessity for Yun Chen to acclimate to the darkness to survive. As she departed, the infected monsters advanced towards Yun Chen. Prepared for combat, he assumed a defensive stance and challenged them to attack. A massive pangolin monster burst from the ground, attempting to ambush him. Displaying agility, 
Yun Chen leaped into the air, avoiding the surprise attack. Infected wolves sought to catch him mid-air, but Yun Chen skillfully evade using Divine Flash. Perceiving the monster's formidable speed, Yun Chen analyzed their stats, realizing they were creations of the Rift, infections from the Dark World. Despite their level and stats, Yun Chen felt an unusual pressure. Suddenly, the seemingly innocuous tree beneath him transformed into an attacking entity, tree demons. The darkness had weakened his perception, rendering him vulnerable. Surrounded on all fronts, Yun Chen adapted, transforming his weapon into a magic staff for increased area of effect skills. Utilizing a combination of hurricane and fireball skills, he created a massive firestorm to repel their attacks. Swiftly handling flame wolves attempting a rear ambush, Yun Chen demonstrated his prowess. To counter the pervasive darkness, Yun Chen activated his talent from the Night Queen, Dark Knight. Enveloped in a powerful aura, he easily dispatched the remaining wolves. Although satisfied with the gained experience, Yun Chen noted the deterioration of his green forest equipment due to the darkness, rendering it unusable after the day. Even his phone succumbed to the environmental effects. Magic and science are powerless against darkness. Fortunately, his formation breaker remained unaffected, likely due to its high star ratings. Surviving until noon, Yun Chen reunited with Qin Cheng outside the rift area. She reiterated that the infected beasts were manifestations of the darkness seeping from the rift. Yun Chen expressed surprise at the incapacity of both magic and technology to resist darkness, pondering the challenges faced by frontline fighters. Understanding the severity of the situation, Yun Chen acknowledged the fragility of the balance between their world and the dark world. Qin Cheng emphasized the necessity of getting stronger swiftly. Inquiring about the fate of the forest and the rift, Yun Chen learned that a mage god would cast a forbidden spell to annihilate everything nearby. Switching to a lighter topic, Qin Cheng offered Yun Chen rewards. Intrigued, he inquired about the wandless spellcasting techniques of Teacher Kathy and the Demon Servants. Qin Cheng explained it was a passive skill for mages and offered the skill book as a reward. Yun Chen gladly accepted, recognizing its potential usefulness in enhancing his magical abilities. The day of departure for the exchange competition had arrived, and as Jiangnan University's participants were announced, the campus buzzed with discussions about the unconventional team leader, Yun Chen, belonging to the jobless class. At the portal entrance, where students gathered to send off the participants, excitement filled the air. The students, donned in their new uniforms, marveled at the school's effort to present a respectable image. However, Yi Qing Ling grew nervous as Yun Chen hadn't arrived yet. Concerned about Yun Chen's whereabouts, Nicole, closest to him, speculated that he was likely clearing dungeons in preparation for the competition. Nicole was worried that Yun Chen might forget to wear the uniform. Suddenly, Yun Chen made a dramatic entrance, apologizing casually for his tardiness. When questioned about his delay, he mentioned clearing dungeons and a quick stop at the library. Yun Chen had to clear the daily tasks from the system and prepare for the upcoming challenges. In the library, he acquired a new basic skill, Mage's Hand, enhancing his versatility in both daily life and battle. Headmaster Yi introduced Instructor Li, who would lead them in the competition. Emphasizing the potential rewards and student points, he urged the participants to perform well. With everyone present, Instructor Li commanded them to enter the portal to Qin Yun University. The students cheered as they embarked on their journey to the competition venue. Upon arriving in Qin Yun Province, the hosting location for this year's competition, the absence of a welcoming committee from Qin Yun University struck them as odd. The discovery of a green dragon, Qin Long, in the sky confirmed the rumors about the university's mythical beast. Observing the nearby sign indicating a path for the jobless class, the participants were puzzled. Yun Chen perceived it as an attempt to humiliate him. Qin Yun students passing by mocked and laughed, claiming the path was typically meant for dog walking. The Qin Yun students revealed that during Yun Chen's high school's recruitment event, Qin Yun University had chosen not to send recruiters. Despite Yun Chen being the top student of his batch, Qin Yun students believed their university could easily beat Jiang Nan University, provoking anger among the participants. Instructor Li and Yun Chen advised the team to ignore the provocations and continue to the venue. Instructor Li reminded the students not to be discouraged by others' words, as they needed to maintain a positive image during pre-competition interviews the following day. Worries arose among the participants, anticipating bias from Qin Yun University reporters, 
particularly targeting Yun Chen. Instructor Li explained the university's motivation to prove Yun Chen's supposed overrating and justify their previous decision not to recruit him. Excitement mounted for the upcoming competition, especially for Yun Chen, who eagerly anticipated proving his detractors wrong. The next day, during Yun Chen's team interview, tension rose as the first question targeted him. Reporters questioned whether Qin Yun University's admissions office had ignored the number one scholar in Jiangnan province and spread rumors about Yun Chen exploiting exam loopholes. The questions triggered waves of discussions and doubts about Yun Chen's abilities. In response, Yun Chen declared his determination to defeat any Qin Yun University students they encountered in the competition until they were carried off the stage, affirming his commitment to proving himself on a national stage. As confetti burst into the sky, signaling the official commencement of the student exchange competition, the host took the stage to introduce the participating teams, starting with Qin Yun University. Ning Jun Yi, the leader, was hailed as the strongest summoner of the Xian Long Kingdom. Spectators praised Ning Jun Yi for breaking the dungeon clearing record and ranking second among all university students. However, rumors circulated that he missed the top spot because of Yun Chen's alleged cheating. The crowd grew unwelcoming as the host introduced Jiang Nan University, led by the controversial jobless class student, Yun Chen. Jeers met the team, prompting Yun Chen to calm his teammates and encourage them to prove their worth with actual results. Amid the unfolding drama, a mysterious man in a red cape made a familiar appearance. As the opening ceremony concluded, the focus shifted to the individual competition, with multiple platforms emerging as battle arenas. The competition followed the principle of avoiding battles between students from the same university and the number one seed of each university. Other than that, duels were arranged randomly. The individual competition commenced, directing students to follow the emitted lights to their respective arenas. Yun Chen found himself transported to his first battle against Sun Yu from Nanji University. The judge outlined the rules, all potions and consumables were usable, and equipment could not exceed diamond grade. As the battle began, Sun Yu, the number three seed, expressed his unlucky draw against Yun Chen and hoped the rumors of cheating were true. Despite maintaining distance and launching various devices, Sun Yu was swiftly defeated by Yun Chen's stampede, leaving the crowd in shock. Moving on to the next opponent, a mage expressed determination to prove the strength of students from normal universities. Yun Chen showcased the power of the mage's hand skill, summoning a large hand that grabbed the mage without the use of a wand. Admitting defeat, the mage marveled at Yun Chen's unexpected skill. Yun Chen's teammates acknowledged that while their opponents weren't overly strong, they did not expect that victory would come so easily. Amidst Yun Chen's success, Instructor Li delivered a piece of bad news, Shen Tai Ran had been defeated in the second battle. The television broadcast revealed Tai Ran lying defeated on the ground, victim to Ba He Song from Victory University. Ba He Song arrogantly expressed disdain for the top seven universities. Yi and Fu analyzed Victory University's risky tactic of deploying a strong number three seed to challenge other schools' top seeds and damage their prestige. Qing Ling, angered by Tai Ran's treatment, hoped Yun Chen would teach Ba He Song a lesson. Meanwhile, as Yun Chen defeated his fourth opponent, he noticed Ba He Song from a nearby arena making threatening hand signals. Perplexed by this encounter, Yun Chen wondered about the identity of this seemingly antagonistic figure. Following another decisive victory by Yun Chen, spectators found it increasingly difficult to dismiss the rumors of cheating, given his incredible strength. As Yun Chen faced his fifth opponent, the crowd observed the arrival of Nye Chang, the second seed from Qin Yun University, known for his destructive power as a berserker with the rare polar bear bloodline. Qin Yun spectators, fueled by the recent interview challenge, rallied behind Nye Chang, hoping he could defeat Yun Chen. Nye Chang, while acknowledging Yun Chen's capabilities, questioned the jobless class's future and sought to prove that Yun Chen did not deserve entry into Qin Yun. Entering berserk mode and stacking buffs, Nye Chang aimed to assert his superiority. In response, Yun Chen, determined to confront Nye Chang head-on and break his pride, began stacking buffs from various classes, leaving the crowd in shock. Despite Nye Chang's initial attack, Yun Chen emerged victorious in their collision, sending Nye Chang flying. Unwilling to accept defeat, Nye Chang found himself at Yun Chen's mercy as he unleashed a relentless barrage of spear attacks. Just as Nye Chang was on the brink of admitting defeat, Yun Chen summoned the flower demon, Xiao Jing, intending to utilize him fully. 
While spectators questioned the summoning of a level 1 beast, Yun Chen ordered Xiao Jing to use Nie Chang for experience, subjecting him to mental torture and humiliation. For two hours, Xiao Jing beat Nie Chang relentlessly, slowly leveling up and inflicting psychological torment. The judge informed Yun Chen that he had ten minutes to end the battle. With a final kick to Nie Chang's face, Yun Chen secured his fifth consecutive victory, advancing to the top 64 ranks. Teleported to the break room, Yun Chen was greeted by his teammates, celebrating their retaliation against Qin Yun's bullying. In the first round, Nicole also secured five wins, and Tai Ran, despite a single loss, advanced. Instructor Lee cautioned them about stronger opponents in the next round, urging them not to become too relaxed and to prepare for the upcoming challenges. As the next elimination round commenced, Yun Chen faced yet another student from Qin Yun University. The Qin Yun student, resigned to his fate, was silenced by vines before he could surrender. Summoning Xiao Jing once more, Yun Chen enthusiastically announced that it was time to level up again, setting the stage for the continuation of the intense competition. Following the previous confrontation, Xiao Jing continued to administer punishment to the Qin Yun student, restrained by Yun Chen. Yun Chen took the opportunity to coach Xiao Qing, refining her whipping technique. The crowd from Qin Yun grew increasingly infuriated with Yun Chen's treatment of their fellow student. Suddenly, a painful scream echoed through the arena, drawing everyone's attention to Ba He Song, who was mercilessly torturing a defeated student. The judge intervened just in time to prevent a potential fatality. In the break room of Victory University, Ba He Song's teammates observed his erratic behavior and questioned why the principal allowed him to go wild. The teacher explained that Ba He Song's parents hailed from different races, both carrying the blood of the Black Dragon. Despite Ba He Song's exceptional talent with three A tier talents compatible with the Black Dragon, the dragon's violent and unrestrained temperament required him to cater to its nature to become stronger. The principal understood this, permitting Ba He Song to unleash his primal instincts. Ba He Song's recent victories against students from the top seven universities justified the principal's unconventional approach. The next match to determine a spot in the top 16 pitted Yun Chen against the formidable Ba He Song. Yun Chen, displaying a hint of pity, as he heard of the dangers of integrating foreign bloodlines to the point of losing one's humanity. Ba He Song provoked him by mentioning that he will crush his skull in front of his family. The mention of Yun Chen's family, however, crossed the line, enraging him. Charging towards Ba He Song. Yun Chen utilized his weapon's effects, causing the black dragon's body to tremble upon impact. When the smoke cleared, Ba He Song found himself kneeling on the ground. Stating that he had crossed the line by bringing Yun Chen's family into the taunts, Yun Chen delivered a series of punches and stomped on Ba He Song with the stampede skill, creating a crater in the arena platform. The crowd was shocked at Yun Chen's violent attacks while maintaining his calm demeanor. Yun Chen, now taunting Ba He Song, watched as he activated his Black Dragon Bloodline skill, transforming into a dragon hybrid with wings, the crowd compared him to a dungeon boss, recognizing the potency of his S-tier bloodline. Ba He Song unleashed Black Dragon breaths at Yun Chen, who effortlessly dodged them. Swiftly appearing in front of Ba He Song, Yun Chen aimed his spear at his heart. Initially defiant, Ba He Song soon realized the perilous situation as Yun Chen's spear hovered inches away from his heart. With no other choice, Ba He Song surrendered. Yun Chen, expressing his willingness to kill but also acknowledging his fear of death, declared that he was unimpressed with Ba He Song. The judge announced Yun Chen as the victor, securing his advancement to the top 16 of the competition. In the break room at Jiang Nan University, Yun Chen's teammates were in awe and concern, fearing Yun Chen might unleash fatal force against Ba He Song. However, Headmaster Yi reassured them, commending Yun Chen for maintaining control over his strength and staying composed throughout the encounter. Instructor Li shared a crucial piece of information, Yun Chen had a younger sister, Yun Tang, still in high school. Expressing concern for her safety, she recommended bringing Yun Tang to Jiangnan province, emphasizing the vulnerability of their small hometown with weak defenses. Recognizing Yun Chen's significance in the battle against the Dark World, Dini Yi urged Instructor Li to consult Yun Chen about the idea, ensuring his peace of mind during training. Amidst these discussions, other university headmasters extended an invitation to Headmaster Yi for their customary betting tradition on match outcomes. Leaving matters in Instructor Li's capable hands, Headmaster Yi joined the fellow headmasters for the betting ritual. 
Meanwhile, Yun Chen prepared for his next opponent, Bu Chan from Dong Fu University, expressing his determination to swiftly conclude the upcoming battle. In the realm of wagers, the headmaster speculated on the outcome of Yun Chen's match with Bu Chan headmaster Yi confidently bet an A-tier skill book on Yun Chen's victory, while Qin Yun University's vice principal staked an A-tier artifact, expressing skepticism about headmaster Ye's confidence. The headmaster from Dong Fu University joined the bet with a beast soul contract. However, to everyone's surprise, the judge swiftly announced Yun Chen's victory, leaving the headmasters astonished. Bu Chan, the sword saint successor from Dong Fu University, found herself perplexed by Yun Chen's prowess and his swordsmanship. They then returned to their resting rooms to prepare for the impending top eight matches. The arena underwent a transformation in anticipation of these high stakes battles. Instructor Li assessed the results so far, Yun Chen and Nicole had emerged victorious in their matches while Shintai ran faced elimination against a formidable adversary. As she perused the upcoming schedule, worries loomed over Yun Chen's next opponent, Ning Jun Yi, the number one seed from Qin Yun University. Ning Jun Yi's strength lay in his top-tier talent, supreme contract, capable of elevating summoned creatures by three grades. In contrast, Yun Chen's supreme proficiency talent and combat instinct made him a versatile contender. The impending clash promised to be intense, with both sides possessing unique strengths. As Ning Jun Yi declared his intent to secure victory for Qin Yun University in his family's honor, Yun Chen remained unfazed, pledging not to let him leave the arena standing. The battle commenced with Jun Yi summoning the Devil Ghost and Earth Demon Flower. Surprised by Jun Yi's swift summoning, Yun Chen moved to stop further creature summoning. In response, Ning Jun Yi activated his secret technique, Synchrony. Yun Chen's spear attack proved ineffective due to the Ning family's secret technique, inheriting the spectral form of the Devil Ghost. Undeterred, Yun Chen utilized the illustration skill, casting a bright light that affected Jun Yi and the Devil Ghost. Jun Yi, attempting to escape, faced Yun Chen's holy spear skill but it was blocked by a growing earth demon flower. Jun Yi's strategic plan became evident as the earth demon flower spread seeds across the platform. However, Yun Chen remained unperturbed, confident in countering the plant with fire. The stage was set for a gripping battle between two formidable opponents, promising twists and turns in the quest for victory. In the midst of the intense battle, Yun Chen faced the challenge of the Earth Demon Flower, strategically planted by Jun Yi. Undeterred, Yun Chen, recognizing the need for fire to counter the Demon Flower, unleashed a barrage of fireballs. However, Jun Yi's water summoned creature swiftly extinguished the flames, leaving Yun Chen in a precarious situation. Confident in his summoning abilities, Jun Yi summoned a diverse army of creatures, including his star creature, the Red Dragon. A wide array of summoned entities emerged, creating a formidable lineup against Yun Chen. Sensing the complexity of the situation, Yun Chen declared his only option to annihilate them all. Jun Yi revealed a sinister tactic claiming that the earth demon flower had planted seeds within Yun Chen. The crowd explained the peril, mentioning that these seeds would drain Yun Chen's vitality, urging him to surrender before being completely depleted. Undaunted, Yun Chen switched to the formidable storm axe obtained from the troll chieftain, relying on its high strength attribute. In a display of overwhelming strength, Yun Chen activated rage-related buffs, ejecting the seeds planted within his body. Jun Yi, confident in his summoned creatures, ordered them to unleash their skills upon Yun Chen. To everyone's surprise, Yun Chen chose not to dodge the incoming attacks, opting to face them head-on while continuing to stack on more buffs. A keen spectator recalled a skill that increased its damage based on the suffered damage. With Yun Chen's high strength from buffs and a powerful weapon, the unleashed destructive power from this skill will prove to be formidable. As the summoned creatures charged towards Yun Chen, he invoked the Rage Awakening skill, swinging the axe with tremendous force, obliterating most of the creatures in a single sweep. Jun Yi, witnessing the devastating impact of Yun Chen's attack, was able to avoid severe damages because he was in the spectral form. As Yun Chen advanced, Jun Yi used the Demon Flower's roots to immobilize him, setting the stage for a follow up attack from the Red Dragon. However, Yun Chen, quick on his feet, summoned water elementals to shield himself from the impending assault. Taking advantage of the situation, Yun Chen pulled the demon flower's roots entwining his leg and swinging them at the red dragon. Juni found Yun Chen a formidable and unpredictable opponent. 
the creatures destroyed by Yun Chen could not be summoned for a certain duration. Determined to buy time, Jun Yi sought to summon additional creatures until the effects of Yun Chen's buffs waned. In a surprising move, Yun Chen hurled a dagger at Jun Yi. Unfazed, Jun Yi made no attempt to dodge, confident that the spectral form rendered him immune to physical attacks. However, his confidence shattered when he noticed a talisman attached to the dagger too late. The exorcist talisman weakened Jun Yi's spectral form, causing him to lose control and revert to his vulnerable human form. As tension rose, Yun Chen seized the upper hand, turning the tide in this unpredictable and high stakes battle. In a surprising turn of events, Headmaster Yi found himself pleasantly surprised by Yun Chen's ingenious combat strategy against the Devil Ghost. Yun Chen, in a genius move, used the typically defensive exorcist talisman on his opponent, effectively removing the Devil Ghost's spectral form. This unexpected decision showcased Yun Chen's exceptional combat decision making skills. Headmaster Yi, impressed by Yun Chen's prowess, confidently informed Headmaster Zhou that Yun Chen would not only defeat all Qin Yun University students but also claim the championship. This bold prediction set the stage for Yun Chen's relentless pursuit of victory. Ning Jun Yi, unable to fathom his defeat through a basic skill, was in disbelief. Yun Chen's comments that he was nothing without his spectral form fueled Jun Yi's frustration. Summoning back his defeated Red Dragon, Juni unleashed the Ning family's secret technique, Synchrony, transforming into a formidable dragon hybrid form. Even Ba He Song, who was only able to transform into a hybrid black dragon form by going to the extremes, marveled at Jun Yi's ease to transform to the high level red dragon just by using his family's secret technique. Headmaster Zhou, however, remained shocked at this move as Ning Jun Yi was still unaware of Yun Chen's weapon's unique ability against dragons. It was why Yun Chen was able to defeat Ba He Song with ease. As Jun Yi launched a powerful attack, the crowd, hopeful for a Qin Yun University comeback, cheered on their contender. However, Yun Chen's agility and strategic placement of his weapon proved too much for Jun Yi. He easily dodged the attack and placed his weapon on the ground. Yun Chen's weapon cut through Jun Yi's underbelly as he leaped over Yun Chen, causing him to crash and revert to his human form. Ning Jun Yi couldn't believe that he was defeated with his dragon power. Yun Chen declared himself as the nemesis of the dragon and was declared the victor, leaving the crowd in disbelief. Moving on to the semi final match, Yun Chen faced Bai Yu, a shadow assassin from Jing Nan University. Bai Yu, respecting Yun Chen's strength, proposed a friendly spar focused on learning from each other. Yun Chen accepted, agreeing to use only assassin related skills. The match unfolded with Bai Yu's shadow strikes and Yun Chen's strategic smoke bombs. Bai Yu managed to block Yun Chen's attack as he emerged from the smoke. As they continued to exchange blows, Bai Yu suggested Yun Chen use skills from other classes. In a surprising twist, the real Yun Chen appeared behind Bai Yu with a dagger on his throat. Yun Chen revealed he had been fighting with his clone, leaving Bai Yu to exclaim at the significant gap in their abilities. The judge announced Yun Chen's advancement to the finals against Nicole, also from Jiangnan University. The crowd said Nicole was only lucky as she managed to avoid all the strong opponents in her previous fights. Nicole, realizing she couldn't defeat Yun Chen, surrendered, making Yun Chen the undisputed champion of the individual competition. As the judge declared Yun Chen's victory, a stunned silence engulfed the crowd. Yun Chen, content with his overwhelming success, stood tall leaving his opponents with nothing to say in response to his triumphant conquest of the individual competition. In the break room of Qin Yun University, Headmaster Zhou was fuming as he browsed through news articles about Yun Chen's victories, bringing shame to their university to the Ning family's name. Displeased with Ning Jun Yi's individual competition performance, Headmaster Zhou demanded redemption through winning the team competition and teleported out of the room angrily. One of the teammates asked what their strategy was for the team competition as it is their weakest segment. Ning Jun Yi, under pressure, hinted at a sacrificial strategy and caused the teammate to look at him in fear. A scream broke out of the room shortly. Back in Jiang Nan's break room, Yun Chen's teammates celebrated his success in the individual competition but were reminded by Yun Chen not to underestimate the upcoming team competition. Headmaster Yi arrived, rewarding Yun Chen with a soul contract and A-grade materials that he had won earlier from the other headmasters. He explained the contract's power to control a soul, likening it to Headmaster Xia's demon slaves. Headmaster Yi also revealed enticing rewards for securing the top spot, 
including student points, cash, and a rare equipment set. The team was very excited at the university's generosity. Instructor Lee, however, came over to deliver concerning news that Qin Yun University's team was replacing their mage who was injured during practice with a guardian knight. This strategic move is obviously aimed to counter Jiang Nan's glass cannon composition with a defensive lineup. Unimpressed, Yun Chen expressed confidence in countering their opponents with his own strategy. Jiang Nan faced by Yi University in the top 16 to top 8 match. Headmaster Yi proposed betting, but the other headmasters declined, acknowledging Yun Chen's overwhelming power. However, the unimpressed Qin Yun's headmaster questioned the effectiveness of Yun Chen's team in the teamwork-oriented team competition. The match began, and Yun Chen's exceptional speed overwhelmed by Yi University's frontline. The priest's attempt to heal proved futile as Yun Chen swiftly broke through their defense, securing an easy victory. Yun Chen's teammates, Yi Qin Ling and Sun Kong, felt their limited contributions in the fight. Yun Chen reassured them of their importance in future, tougher matches. Spectators marveled at Jiang Nan's strength, recognizing Yun Chen's dominance. Their next opponent, Qing Zhou University, specialized in mages. Fei Cheng, the shadow assassin, was the perfect counter against mages and prepared for battle, anticipating an easy win. However, Yun Chen sensed a trap, warning against underestimating their seemingly straightforward opponents. As the impending match loomed, the Jiang Nan University team gathered to discuss their strategy. Fei Cheng and Tai Ran expressed confidence in infiltrating the opponent's backlands with their respective skills. Other teammates echoed a shared sentiment, expressing a desire to contribute more actively instead of merely supporting Yun Chen after his overwhelming displays. In a democratic move, Yun Chen acknowledged their wishes, recognizing the importance of teamwork. He decided to let them play more substantial roles in the attacks, showcasing the essence of collaboration within the team. Yun Chen formulated a plan. Nicole, Tai Ran, and Yu Su would create attack opportunities, Fei Cheng would execute sneak attacks, and Yun Chen himself would provide cover and support. It was a harmonious decision, affirming the unity of the team. As the match commenced, the team charged forward. As usual, Yi Qing Ling and Sun Kong did not have enough time to provide buffs and additional support to their teammates. Yun Chen remained vigilant, analyzing the opponent's skills while offering cover to his teammates. He quickly assessed that the opponents were specialized mages, each focusing on a single elemental skill. One mage however, strategically positioned in the last row, intrigued Yun Chen, his specialized element shrouded in mystery. As Yun Chen's team advanced, the Qin Zhou team leader ordered a barrage of spells towards them. Employing his quick and double-casting talents, Yun Chen retaliated with multiple fireballs, attempting to intercept the incoming magical onslaught. However, Countering all four mages by himself proved challenging, and some spells managed to slip through. Tai Ran stepped in, blocking the remaining spells, allowing Nicole and Yusu to follow up with their attacks. Their offensive was thwarted by the earth-based mage, who erected a protective wall. Confident in their diverse elemental skills, the Qin Zhou team believed they could counter any assault. Yet, a sudden drop of blood materialized into Tai Ran, launching a swift counterattack. Despite the surprise attack, another mage intervened, summoning vines to immobilize Tai Ran. Undeterred, Tai Ran asserted that he wasn't alone in this fight. Fei Ching emerged from the shadows, ready to launch an attack. To everyone's surprise, his body suddenly disappeared and reappeared next to his teammates, surrounded by the Qing Zhou team. The enemy team leader mocked Fei Ching, unleashing a barrage of spells towards him. In a moment of apparent sacrifice, Yun Chen appeared behind Fei Cheng, hurling him out of the attack range just before the explosion. The teammates were initially shocked, believing Yun Chen had sacrificed himself. Their concerns heightened as Yun Chen's combat prowess equated to half the team's strength. Fei Cheng blamed himself for not being more cautious, but to their relief, Yun Chen revealed that the one struck was his clone. However, he conceded that the opponent's teleportation ability had caught him off guard the explosion will prevent him from using the clone technique for the next two hours. The unexpected turn of events intensified the challenge, forcing Yun Chen and his team to adapt swiftly to the evolving dynamics of the match. In the unfolding dynamics of the competition, the unexpected proficiency of a mage specializing in teleportation emerged as a significant challenge for Yun Chen and his team. Such specialization was rare due to the inherent limitations on combat power, 
making it an uncommon choice unless the mage had chosen the hidden job space mage, which carried a low probability. Nicole astutely observed that the mage had strategically placed multiple teleportation portals around the arena during the distraction caused by their opponents. Positioned at the rear of the formation, the mage proved elusive, complicating any attempts to reach him directly. In response, Yun Chen reassured his team, urging them to cover him while he devised a strategy to tackle this teleportation threat. As Nicole and Yusu attempted to engage the mages, they found themselves thwarted by the quick and unpredictable teleportation. Frustration set in, compounded by the cheers from the crowd, who, despite Qin Yun University's slim chances at the championship, were eager to witness any team challenging Jiang Nan. Undeterred, Yun Chen decided it was time to take matters into his own hands. Charging towards one of the mages, he surprised the teleportation specialist by pulling out a gun and firing, injuring the mage. The mage, caught off guard by Yun Chen's unexpected arsenal, labeled him as despicable. In return, Yun Chen asserted that both sides were engaged in despicable tactics and unleashed a barrage of bullets on all enemy mages. Overwhelmed by the sheer volume of bullets, the teleportation mage panicked. In a strategic move, Fei Ching stealthily approached and caught the mage off guard while he was distracted by Yun Chen's gunfire, placing a dagger at his throat. The opposing team leader urged his teammates to raise magical shields to block the bullets, but Nicole effortlessly broke through, slamming him into the ground. Facing the relentless assault, the opposing team surrendered, allowing Yun Chen's team to advance to the top four. The Qin Yun crowd, hoping for a contender to surpass Jiang Nan, felt disappointed. Back in the break room, most of the team jubilantly discussed their victorious fight. However, Yi Qin Ling and Sun Kong sat in a corner, feeling a sense of melancholy for not contributing significantly in the battles. Their dejection faded as Yun Chen assured them they would play a pivotal role in the upcoming fights, sparking excitement within them. As the semi-final match unfolded, Jiang Nan faced the formidable team from Victory University, known for its students with beast bloodlines, led by Ba He Song. Despite the intimidating appearance of the Victory University team, Yun Chen remained resolute. Seventy years ago, many players had chosen peculiar monster-related races in the game, Temple of Legends, and had retained those forms in the merged reality. Some stayed together with their partners in real life before the transformation while others got together with other monster races as it is better than being alone. These students are the offspring of those players. Ba He Song's determination to prove themselves against the abuse faced due to their monster bloodlines fueled his resolve to embrace his black dragon bloodline fully. This determination, though both hateful and pitiful, did not sway Yun Chen's commitment to defeating them. With a firm resolve, Yun Chen urged his team to adhere to their planned strategy, prepared to face whatever challenges Victory University would throw their way. The battlefield ignited with tension as the clash between Jiang Nan and Victory University began. Victory University, driven by a desire to defeat as many opponents as possible, charged recklessly towards Yun Chen's team. Victory was no longer their goal, their aim was sheer destruction. On the flip side, Yun Chen's team adopted a full defense strategy, establishing multiple shields to fortify their back line against the impending charge. As the defense held, Yi Qin Ling and Sun Kong, the core of the team's back line, found solace in their protection. Yu Su, however, snapped them back to their roles, reminding them to contribute actively. Sun Kong summoned his creatures to fortify their defenses, while Yi Qin Ling began chanting a powerful thunder spell. The completed spell struck Ba He Song's team with formidable force, dealing significant damage in a single blow. Observing this, one of the headmasters noted the strength of the Taoist priest's spell but highlighted its long casting time. Yun Chen, strategic as ever, had anticipated this. He set up a defensive formation to provide Yi Qin Ling the necessary time to cast her potent spell. Headmaster Yi added that Yun Chen's damage output was on par with hers but emphasized reducing the risk of injury and giving the team a chance to contribute. Despite his seemingly cold exterior, Yun Chen's true nature reflected genuine kindness. Yi Qin Ling continued to launch talismans at the opponents, and Sun Kong directed his summoned creatures to intensify the assault. The already battered Victory University team valiantly withstood the onslaught until they were ultimately defeated. Ba He Song, dissatisfied with another loss, confronted Yun Chen. To everyone's surprise, Yun Chen empathized, suggesting that their resentment should be directed at those who bullied them, not innocent bystanders. 
he urged them to follow what normal humans would do. Ba He Song realized Yun Chen had treated them as normal human beings all these time. Touched by Yun Chen's perspective, he surrendered. The crowd, witnessing Yun Chen's unexpected kindness, began to reconsider their opinions. Perhaps there was more to him than met the eye. The final match loomed, featuring Qin Yun and Jiang Nan University. Qin Yun emphasized a defensive approach, raising suspicions among the crowd due to an injured mage's last-minute substitution for a paladin. The new formation seemingly countered Yun Chen's team, leading to speculation of match-fixing to favor the host university. As the judge signaled the start of the final match, Ning Juni commanded his team into a defensive formation, summoning tanky creatures to bolster their defenses. With buffs from the priest, resilient warriors, paladins, and summoned creatures, Qin Yun aimed to counter Yun Chen with an impenetrable defense. Surprisingly, Yun Chen's team adopted a defensive formation as well, with Yun Chen positioned at the back line. Various buffs were applied, and Yi Qin Ling empowered Yun Chen with the Thunder Talisman. Yun Chen, in response to the opponent's formidable defense, declared that if they brought out the strongest shield, his team would respond with the strongest spear. The battlefield was set for the ultimate clash between Qin Yun and Jiang Nan University. As Yun Chen stood in the back line with his spear, a close-range weapon, Qin Yun's vice principal questioned Headmaster Yi about Yun Chen's intentions. Headmaster Yi, maintaining a sense of mystery, claimed it was part of Yun Chen's plan, although he, too, seemed uncertain. Another headmaster recalled a low-level basic skill that allowed the use of any close-range weapon for a long-range attack. Back in the match, Yun Chen had declared that since Qin Yun had brought out the strongest shield, he would respond with the strongest spear. He continued to bolster his strength with buffs, leaving the spectators curious about his strategy. Realizing Yun Chen's intention to use a one-time skill, Ning Juni promptly ordered all summoned creatures to form a defensive line, instructing his team to activate their defense skills. With determination, Yun Chen charged and threw his spear using the basic general skill, throw. The powerful throw shattered all layers of defense, obliterating the summoned creatures. While Qin Yun's team managed to endure the attack, they suffered substantial damage. Ning Juni, impressed by Yun Chen's commitment, believed victory was now out of reach for Yun Chen, considering his weapon was now gone. Unexpectedly, a golden arm materialized and retrieved the spear, throwing it back towards Yun Chen. This was Yun Chen's skill, Mage's Hand. Yun Chen, unfazed, stated that he hadn't bet everything on that single throw as he could just make another attempt. The crowd and Ning Jun Yi were astonished at Yun Chen's unexpected tactic. The headmaster confirmed that it was indeed the throw skill and explained Yun Chen's talent for increasing the weapon tier by three levels. Additionally, the throw skill amplified damage based on the distance of the throw. As Yun Chen prepared for a second throw, Ning Jun Yi urgently directed his mages to stop him, acknowledging that they couldn't withstand another powerful throw. The mages attempted to impede Yun Chen, casting stones at him, but his teammates easily deflected the projectiles. Yun Chen threw his spear again, prompting Qin Yun's teammates to scatter, breaking their formation. Unfortunately, they were caught in the explosive aftermath of the throw. While Yun Chen's teammates cleaned up the battlefield, the defeated opponents pleaded with Ning Jun Yi to surrender. Frustrated and seeking a chance for revenge in the upcoming survival battle, Ning Jun Yi was about to concede when vines entangled his mouth, preventing further sounds. Yun Chen's team surrounded him, unleashing their pent-up frustration and retaliating against Qin Yun's perceived humiliation throughout the competition. The crowd, witnessing the humiliating scene, began to leave. The judge intervened, recognizing that Ning Jun Yi represented the face of Qin Yun, and this beating would only worsen the university's reputation. Reluctantly, Yun Chen's team halted their assault. The judge announced Jiang Nan as the winner of the team competition. In the midst of this spectacle, the red-cloaked judge observed with anticipation. It seemed he was finally ready to make his move. In the aftermath of the team competition, the mood in Qin Yun's break room was somber. Ning Jun Yi remained silent since the match. The Qin Yun vice principal reassured him, explaining that the match schedule had been strategically arranged to secure the second place, allowing them to maintain a position among the top seven universities. Ning Jun Yi vowed to settle the score with Yun Chen in the future. Conversely, in Jiang Nan's break room, a jubilant atmosphere prevailed as they celebrated their victory, 
Headmaster Yi assured the team that the championship title was nearly secured, advising them to focus on the upcoming survival match and accumulate resources. The survival match would take place in an abandoned city within the Qingyun province, once prosperous but now overrun by monsters due to the darkness aura. Resources within the city made it an ideal location for the survival match, and the headmaster informed the team that they could keep all the resources collected during the match, sparking joy among the members. Yun Chen, ever strategic, inquired about the possibility of finding a soul-purifying plant during the survival match. This plant was crucial for creating the Enlightenment Potion, which could aid Yun Tang in awakening a powerful talent. Headmaster Yi confirmed the likelihood of high-tier treasures, including the soul-purifying plant, being present in the city. Nicole, deep in thought, stared at Yun Chen. As the match is about to start, Instructor Li, at the teleportation portal, emphasized the importance of collecting resources and treasures rather than just battling monsters. She reminded them to be cautious, as their opponents included both monsters and students from other universities. Telecommunication devices were disallowed, and only flares were permitted for communication. The wooden block with a teleportation skill would serve as an emergency escape mechanism. Yun Chen's teammates revealed that they had agreed to use the signal of firing three flares when they found the soul purifying plant for Yun Chen to help with Yun Tang's awakening. Puzzled by how they knew his reasons for finding the plant, Nicole revealed to Yun Chen that she overheard his mention of the plant during a meal, prompting her to get everyone to support his quest. Grateful for the teamwork, Yun Chen thanked his teammates. As the match commenced and they were teleported into the city, Yun Chen surveyed the damaged abandoned city, once a thriving metropolis now reduced to ruins by the darkness aura. His first objective was to locate his teammates, scattered randomly across the city. Seeking high ground for a better view and to avoid ambushes, Yun Chen encountered various monsters. A flying bird monster attempted to challenge him, but Yun Chen's skills easily dispatched it. Using a battle cry to intimidate monsters and save time, Yun Chen reached high ground and began scouting for his teammates. Noticing a large gathering of students from different schools, Yun Chen found it peculiar. Suddenly, three flares illuminated the sky, signaling the discovery of the soul purifying plant. Yun Chen, recognizing the significance of the signal, rushed toward the location with heightened speed. Although it is good news that the plant is found, Using the flares also means that their location is exposed to the other opponents. At the designated spot, Yun Chen's teammate, frustrated by her inability to defeat a three-headed demon snake guarding the soul purifying plant, had fired the flares to attract help. She awaited Yun Chen or her other teammates but was taken aback by the unexpected arrival of a multitude of students approaching her location. The survival match had taken an unforeseen turn, intensifying the challenges faced by Yun Chen and his team in their quest for victory. As Yun Chen's teammate awaited his arrival, she found herself surrounded by a group of students who weren't part of the top universities. Perplexed by their sudden appearance, she noticed they hailed from different schools. One of the students, displaying an arrogant demeanor, claimed to have detected her scent and identified her as an arrogant student from Jiang Nan who dared to fire the flares and expose their location. Warned that Yun Chen was on his way, she advised them to leave before he arrived. The students, however, dismissed the threat confident that their sheer numbers could overpower Yun Chen. They revealed their alliance, consisting of over a thousand students from 55 ordinary universities. Their plan was to defeat the top universities with sheer numbers and divide the loot afterward. The alliance students, numbering in the thousands, believed they could crush anyone in their path. Just as they felt invincible, an explosion erupted behind their leader. Yun Chen had arrived, questioning who wished to crush him. His teammate was delighted by Yun Chen's timely arrival. Despite their bravado, the Alliance students felt the pressure when confronted by Yun Chen. The beast man among them attempted to reassure the group, emphasizing their numerical advantage. Yun Chen, undeterred, welcomed the challenge and released another battle cry. The effect was immediate, a significant number of Alliance students fell to their knees, weakened by the force of Yun Chen's intimidation. The beast man, now shaken, attempted to rally his teammates, but Yun Chen swiftly appeared in front of him. Fearing Yun Chen, the beast man fled, triggering a mass retreat among the Alliance students. Yun Chen, disappointed by their lack of courage, thanked his teammate for safeguarding the soul purifying plant. Headmaster Yi, anticipating a fierce battle, was surprised by Yun Chen's strategic avoidance of conflict. He recognized it as a prudent move to conserve energy in the survival match. 
While other groups faced defeat at the hands of the alliance, Yun Chen's team emerged unscathed. Headmaster Yi acknowledged the need for rule adjustments in future survival matches to prevent such unfair arrangements. Concerns arose about the safety of missing students, potentially devoured by monsters or trapped in debris. The Qin Yun vice principal assured that safety measures were in place, including a protective shield and experienced masters overseeing the match. Judges are also hidden in the area, ready to protect the students from fatality if necessary. Despite some unavoidable casualties, the overall safety precautions aimed to minimize harm. Meanwhile, Yun Chen engaged in a fierce battle with the three-headed demon snake. With a final slash, he defeated the formidable foe. Praised by his teammate, Yun Chen acknowledged the controlled difficulty levels in the survival match. He secured the soul purifying plant and instructed his teammate to signal the rest of their team. Nearby, Ning Jun Yi's team adjusted their plans upon Yun Chen's arrival. Opting to avoid confrontation, they sought resources elsewhere. Wondering about the missing teammate, Li Jun, they were unaware of his secluded journey to a temple in another corner of the abandoned city. Alone, Li Jun expressed his disregard for the competition, believing all would be destroyed upon the arrival of a mysterious lord. In a dark ritual, he sacrificed himself, opening a portal and releasing an ominous surge of evil energy into the sky. The unfolding events hinted at a deeper and darker twist to the survival match. Darkness energy surged from the ominous church, unfurling its malevolent tendrils throughout the once prosperous city. The malefic aura corrupted everything in its wake, sending monsters into a frenzied state of aggression. Aboard the airship, a sudden disruption paralyzed all screens and monitors. Magic and technological devices ceased to function, casting an eerie stillness upon the vessel. The crew grappled with the sudden blackout, urging each other to ignore the faulty screens and just look out the airship to observe the situation on the ground. The truth dawned upon them, the darkness energy, an ancient and corrupt force, had permeated the city. Its origin likely stemmed from a rift within the abandoned city. Knowing the corrosive effects of darkness on equipment, the weakening impact on humans, and the augmentation and strengthening of monsters, the headmasters swiftly shifted their focus to safeguarding the students and began to coordinate with the judges on the grounds. Their paramount concern was the safety of the students scattered below. With the demon lord's essence within his body, Yun Chen will be the prime target of the monsters infected by the darkness energy. As Headmaster Yi is currently unable to enter the city while the shield is still up, he prayed for Yun Chen's safety. Among the team members, Yun Chen and his teammate remained in the warehouse, awaiting the arrival of the rest. An abrupt shift in the atmosphere caught their attention. An unsettling odor permeated the air, reminiscent of the darkness aura. Yun Chen, his senses attuned to such energies, recognized the familiar feeling. As he looked around to find the source of the darkness aura, his teammates arrived and began to call out to Yun Chen. However, as they approached the warehouse, a wave of darkness energy surged towards them. Yun Chen, discerning the imminent danger, urgently called them towards him and not to come into contact with the darkness energy. The team was unprepared for this unprecedented threat as they have never experienced the darkness energy before. In the ensuing chaos, a teammate fell victim to a monstrous creature emerging from the ground. More abominations rose from the encroaching darkness, launching a relentless assault. Yun Chen sprang into action, defending the retreating teammates. The rest of the teammates also engaged in a fierce and chaotic battle with the invading monsters. Nicole, attempting to activate her blade skill, was thwarted by a charging beast that knocked her weapon aside. Struck by the darkness energy, her equipment succumbed to corruption, disintegrating rapidly. Before the encroaching wave of darkness could consume her, Yun Chen utilized his druidic skill, summoning protective vines to whisk Nicole to safety. In a swift gesture, he enveloped the embarrassed Nicole in his jacket. As the surviving members regrouped, a new problem surfaced, the darkness energy had engulfed their surroundings. Yun Chen, wielding his wand, endeavored to purify the surrounding darkness energy. Amidst their struggles, an emergency broadcast echoed, urging immediate evacuation via the wooden teleportation block. As the team began to evacuate, a fresh predicament arose as Nicole discovered her teleportation block malfunctioning. The urgency of the situation intensified as they were caught between the encroaching darkness and the imperative to escape the city's imminent collapse. As the emergency evacuation message echoed through the air, 
Nicole's anxiety heightened upon realizing that her teleportation block had succumbed to the effects of the darkness energy. Yun Chen, quick to assess the situation, speculated that the malevolent force had damaged the teleportation magic array. Yun Chen offered his own teleportation block to Nicole. Concerned about Yun Chen's safety if he were to part with his means of escape, Nicole hesitated. In response, Yun Chen assured her that he had his own methods, urging her to prioritize her own safety. Resigned to his decision, Nicole activated the teleportation block, bidding Yun Chen to stay safe before vanishing. In Nicole's absence, a familiar figure cloaked in red appeared, applauding Yun Chen for his leadership and courage. Recognizing him as the judge from the individual competition, Yun Chen questioned the reason behind his unexpected presence. The enigmatic figure revealed that he was assigned to protect exceptional students like Yun Chen in times of crisis, activated due to the emergence of the rift and darkness energy. With a promise to bring him to a secure location, he gave a tap on Yun Chen's shoulder, and they teleported away. Meanwhile, Headmaster Yi arrived at the scene, noting the absence of Jiang Nan students and suspecting their use of the teleportation block. Detecting traces of space magic, he found the situation peculiar, realizing that tracking them over a vast distance would be challenging. Concerned for their safety, he pondered the difficulty of locating them if they had teleported too far. As Yun Chen emerged from the space magic portal, he found himself outside the abandoned city, surrounded by a desolate area tainted by darkness energy. The apparent lack of safety in this location raised alarms for Yun Chen. Attempting to exploit the element of surprise, the mysterious red-clad figure launched an attack from behind. However, Yun Chen's swift evasion demonstrated an unexpected agility, defying the presumed slowdown caused by the darkness energy. Activating the Dark Knight mode, Yun Chen declared darkness as his strength, revealing a newfound capability obtained from the essence of the Demon Lord. The red-clad man, a level 38 space magician, fired space blades at Yun Chen, testing the limits of his abilities. Despite the barely visible nature of the space blades, Yun Chen relied on Divine Flash to dodge the attacks. Recognizing the similarity between Divine Flash and his space magic, the red-clad man anticipated Yun Chen's energy consumption and believed that Yun Chen would be able to last long. Yun Chen attempted a counterattack with fireballs, but the space blades effortlessly passed through them. With limited Divine Flash usages, Yun Chen struggled to dodge all the attacks, eventually succumbing to a hit. The red-cloaked man, confident in his superiority, used a space distortion skill, dealing substantial damage to Yun Chen. As Yun Chen appeared defeated, the red-clad man approached, intending to return his head to claim his rewards. However, Yun Chen, seemingly lifeless, unleashed a surprising punch, catching his adversary off guard. Vowing retaliation, the red-clad man found himself on the receiving end of a formidable strike. Yun Chen, having fully regenerated and entered the second mode of the Dark Knight talent, challenged his opponent to continue the battle. The stage was set for a final showdown between Yun Chen and the formidable space magician. Enraged, the red man vehemently vowed to end Yun Chen's life. As Yun Chen retrieved his weapon, he contemplated the fact that his previous punch had not been sufficient to defeat his adversary. He had strategically dropped his weapon earlier to lower the red man's guard, a tactic he couldn't employ again due to the extended cooldown time for super regeneration. Recognizing the formidable nature of the Red Man's space magic and its high damage output, Yun Chen acknowledged the urgency of concluding the battle swiftly. He resolved to initiate the attack with his full arsenal. Waves of fireballs and cascading rocks were unleashed, but the Red Man adeptly blocked them with his space magic. Even the emergence of vines charging toward the adversary met the same fate, slashed away by the Red Man's skills. Undeterred, Yun Chen executed a dagger attack but it was negated by the red man's skills again. The red man used the space distortion skill again to damage the incoming Yun Chen but it turned out to be a clone. The real Yun Chen is behind him, launching a spear attack. However, the red man countered the move, revealing that he has already detected Yun Chen behind him. As Yun Chen found himself unable to dodge the counterattack, he was forced to use the invincible skill. Yun Chen successfully blocked the assault, catching the red man off guard. Seizing the opportunity, Yun Chen followed up with a sword skill, prompting the Red Man to teleport away to avoid being struck. The Red Man, astounded by Yun Chen's array of techniques, realized that victory was not as assured as he believed. Despite the Red Man's attempts to dodge with teleports, Yun Chen, using Divine Flash, 
pursued relentlessly until he was physically drained. Amused by Yun Chen's exhaustion, the red man questioned if Yun Chen understood how he consistently predicted and dodged his attacks. He proposed revealing the answer before ending Yun Chen's life. Yun Chen, however, deduced that a magical tracing mark had been left on him during the individual competition, explaining the red man's sudden appearances right after Nicole left his side. Despite this revelation, Yun Chen remained resolute, declaring that his defeat was inevitable. Annoyed by Yun Chen's persistence, the red man concluded that Yun Chen's inability to use divine flash signaled his imminent defeat. Yun Chen, urging him to look at his feet, revealed traps set during their chase. The red man, stepping on a mine, was engulfed in flames. Though he endured the explosion, the damage was severe. Acknowledging the red man's resilience, Yun Chen prepared for a decisive spear throw. Recognizing the threat, the red man attempted to escape using space teleportation. However, Yun Chen activated his eyes of darkness, momentarily freezing the red man in place. Shocked by his inability to move, the red man realized Yun Chen had inherited all of the Night Queen's talents. Despite the brief duration due to their level disparity, it was enough. Yun Chen launched the throw skill, hitting the red man. As the red man met his demise, a plethora of loot materialized. Yun Chen, relieved by the battle's conclusion, hoped among the loot were skill books for basic space magic spells. Exhausted from the intense battle, Yun Chen took a moment to catch his breath. Every trick in his arsenal had been employed to overcome the formidable red man surveying the unfamiliar surroundings, he speculated on the red man's motives, suspecting an ulterior purpose behind the tracing mark and their mysterious location. Despite the uncertainties, Yun Chen decided to investigate the loot dropped by the red man. In the aftermath of a player's death, their inventory spilled into reality. Among the items, Yun Chen discovered a few skill books related to space magic. Most were advanced skills beyond his current capabilities, but a basic skill book caught his attention, Space Tier, akin to the Red Man's distortion skill. Yun Chen, relying on his supreme proficiency talent, hoped to enhance the skill's effects. He then kept it in his inventory for later study. As he sifted through other equipment, some with high-level requirements remained beyond his immediate use. However, valuable materials and an enigmatic black feather, resistant to the analysis skill, intrigued him. Suddenly, Headmaster Yi materialized, relieved to find Yun Chen alive. He had been prepared to intervene but was astonished at Yun Chen's solo victory. Yun Chen presented the black feather and asked if he knew what it was. Identifying it as the symbol of the Advent Organization, Headmaster Yi shed light on the unfolding crisis. The Advent Organization, composed of traitors seeking refuge in the Dark World, aimed to usher in darkness. They are the ones who orchestrated the current chaos. Infiltrating schools as students, they conducted self-sacrifice rituals to open rifts, enabling the dark energy spread. Yun Chen's possession of the Demon Lord's essence marked him as a target for the Dark World. During Yun Chen's battle, the abandoned city's barrier had opened, allowing fighters from various universities to enter and turn the tide against the monsters. The city was swiftly cleansed, though the survival match's impact lingered. Despite the grim circumstances, Jiang Nan secured the championship based on individual and team competitions as the survival match's result was disregarded due to the incident, yet the award ceremony lacked jubilation. Everyone has realized that the peace that they have been enjoying is coming to an end. In a meeting with headmasters and Chu Tian He of the military department, grim statistics emerged, over 300 elite students killed and many more injured. The unexpected presence of Advent Organization members among students added to the tragedy. The Advent Organization, presumed destroyed decades ago, had evidently endured in the shadows, preparing for this large-scale attack. A more significant concern arose, the existence of dual-class warriors. Chu Tian he revealed that dual-classing was possible through items similar to the Demon Lord Essence. A four-time job changed warrior's heart can be used to create five warrior essences. Consuming the essences could increase attribute and skill points and even the talents of the god of war and obtain the second job. Some were surprised by this as it seems to be stronger than a demon lord's essence, but Headmaster Yi said this is expected since the dark world is much stronger than their world and would naturally be able to extract greater powers from the essences. The military also voiced the concerns of the unlimited possibility of having the essences of other job classes, leading to the possibility of having numerous occupations. 
Xu Tian he also expected that the dual class warrior sent by them was only meant to expose the existence of the dual class to the world. This revelation raised the specter of numerous dual class occupations and could potentially create internal strife and weaken humanity against the dark world. Chu Tian he emphasized the need to eliminate the advent organization and warned of potential future attacks. Despite the challenges, Headmaster Yi rallied the spirits of Jiang Nan students. The championship rewards, including student points, a skill book, and cash, lifted their morale. As a bonus, Headmaster Yi unveiled the promised unique weapon for Yun Chen as the team leader, a rare blink dagger. Yun Chen, pleasantly surprised, accepted the powerful weapon, appreciating the support and rewards that came with their championship victory, even in the face of looming threats from the Dark World and the Sinister Advent Organization. Examining the rare blink dagger bestowed upon him, Yun Chen marveled at its exceptional quality. Headmaster Yi elucidated that it was crafted from unique materials obtained from the Dark Rift, rendering it indestructible with an unparalleled sharpness comparable to diamond. Impervious to corrosion from darkness energy, it was designed for Yun Chen to combat enemies from the rift. Instructor Li acknowledged the dagger's significance, noting its long association with Headmaster Yi. Its bestowal upon Yun Chen symbolized the Headmaster's trust in him. Yun Chen, as the team leader, was entitled to additional rewards, yet he selflessly offered the cash and a plus tier materials to the teammate who had aided him in finding the soul purifying plant. Despite her protests, Yun Chen insisted on the gesture. In a private discussion, Instructor Li informed Yun Chen about arranging a spot for Yun Tang, expressing the headmaster's willingness to welcome her to Jiang Nan High School. Situated in Tianan City, the core area of Jiang Nan Province, the school promised top-notch education in a secure environment. Yun Chen agreed to bring Yun Tang for a visit during weekends, appreciating the opportunity for her. Instructor Li shared another piece of good news, acknowledging Yun Chen's prowess, the creator of his current weapon, Formation Breaker, expressed excitement and interest in crafting another multiform weapon. Yun Chen eagerly anticipated the meeting, recognizing that such a weapon would significantly enhance his battle prowess. Back at his home, Yun Chen felt the weight of being targeted by the forces of the Dark World. Determined to grow stronger, he began understanding the usage of the Blink Dagger. The Dagger designed to automatically charge itself at night by absorbing starlight, held promise for Yun Chen's future battles. Turning his attention to the system rewards, Yun Chen uncovered a shocking revelation, an S-tier skill. The sure-hit skill emerged as a potent ability, offering a decisive advantage against strong adversaries like the Space Mage. The knock on his door interrupted his thoughts, revealing the appearance of the Demon Servant, who conveyed Headmaster Xia's delight with Yun Chen's achievements. In recognition, Yun Chen received the Nether Demonic Flame, a powerful elemental enhancement obtained by the Ice Queen from the defeated Demon Lord. The Flame, capable of enhancing fire attribute skills and providing immunity to fire-based skill damage upon perfect absorption, came with a caution. The Servant warned Yun Chen against direct absorption, advising him to pair it with ice-type herbs for safety. Yun Chen, however, consumed it directly. He was caught by surprise by the intense reaction but he soon neutralized it by relying on his super regeneration talent. The newfound power, manifested as the nether flame, replaced all his fire skills, marking a significant leap in potency. The servant congratulated him and understood why he is the star student of Headmaster Xiao. The next day, Yun Chen visited the forge room to meet Mu Jia Xu, the creator of his multiform weapon. Intrigued by the extensive array of weapons, Yun Chen met the enthusiastic blacksmith. Mu Jia Xu, thrilled to finally encounter Yun Chen, praised his use of multiform weapons, deeming him the perfect owner. Recognizing Yun Chen's potential, Mu Jia Xu offered him another multiform weapon as a secondary choice. Surveying the countless options available in the room, Yun Chen's attention was captivated by a magnificent and imposing sniper rifle in the room. Amidst the impressive arsenal of weapons in the forge room, Yun Chen's attention was captivated by a remarkable sniper rifle that could seamlessly transform into fighting sticks. Mu Jia Xu, the blacksmith, expressed surprise at Yun Chen's proficiency with a sniper rifle, prompting Yun Chen to request a closer look at the versatile weapon. Given that Yun Chen's current weapon, Formation Breaker, was primarily a close-range tool, he sought a long-range weapon to complement it. Proudly explaining the weapon's capabilities. 
Mu Jia Shu detailed how it functioned as a sniper rifle for long-range attacks and transformed into fighting sticks for close-range defense. Yun Chen proposed the idea of dual guns, envisioning one with a longer shotgun for short-range armor-piercing and the other with a shorter gun for rapid fire, featuring burst and automatic burst fire modes. Mu Jia Shu promised to make Yun Chen the perfect weapon based on his suggestions and offered the sniper rifle for him to use temporarily. Instructor Li was pleased with the discussion's progress but soon received shocking news on her phone. Small rifts had emerged throughout Xian Long Kingdom, with dark energy spreading to many cities, potentially orchestrated by the Advent Organization. Dong Yun City, Yun Chen's hometown, stood near one of these rifts, lacking strong defenses against an imminent invasion. Worried about Yun Tang, Yun Chen expressed his concern. In the portal room of Jiang Nan University, Headmaster Yi saw Yun Chen attempting to enter the portal and began to dissuade Yun Chen from joining the battle, emphasizing that a student shouldn't be involved. Rejecting the order, Yun Chen asserted his need to protect his family. Instructor Li intervened, explaining Yun Chen's sister was in danger, promising to escort him and ensure his safety. Headmaster Yi accepted, urging them to stay safe as they departed for the garrison corps. At the garrison corps, Yun Chen and Instructor Li sought information from Commander Fan Junmin. The troops, barely reaching the second job classes, were grateful for reinforcement from a third job class like Instructor Li. As Instructor Li turned to Yun Chen, she realized he had disappeared and hurriedly chased after him. The army, facing overwhelming waves of monsters, felt ill-equipped without elite warriors who had been transferred to the front line during peaceful times. Suddenly, a tornado combined with demonic fireballs decimated nearby monsters, offering a glimmer of hope to the struggling soldiers. Yun Chen, riding a griffin, soared into view. Impressed by the griffin, the army recognized Yun Chen as their city's top scholar. Yun Chen explained his arrival and inquired about the presence of Advent organization members who might have opened the rift portals. The soldiers, focused on defending city borders, hadn't seen any infiltrators. Suspicious of the absence of Advent organization members, Yun Chen surmised they might be using monsters as a diversion to infiltrate the city unnoticed. Concerned about the true purpose of the attack on Dong Yun City, Yun Chen received a call from Yun Tang. She informed him that they had sought refuge in a safe house after the alarm was raised but noticed strangers in peculiar outfits outside. Urging her not to open the door, Yun Chen rushed towards Yun Tang's location, fueled by the urgency to protect his sister. The mysterious group sneered at the seemingly feeble safe house, dismissing it as a mere training ground structure. The leader reminded them of their objective today. Since Yun Chen is untouchable in Jiang Nan, they have switched their target to his sister, Yun Tang to draw him out to capture him so that they can obtain the God of War Essence reward from the Demon Lord. With a single swing of a sword, they effortlessly demolished the entrance, revealing their target, Yun Tang. Amidst their intrusion, a teacher launched an assassination attempt on the leader, a second job class berserker. However, the berserker effortlessly repelled her, highlighting the vast power difference a second job class versus a level 27 first job class assassin they sneered at the poor quality of teachers in this school. Closing in on Yun Tang, the berserker commanded her compliance, shrugging off her pleas for help. In a sudden turn of events, a spear hurtled towards the berserker, a powerful projectile unleashed by Yun Chen's devastating skill. The leader's body disintegrated upon impact, leaving the invaders in shock. Recognizing the signature throw technique as Yun Chen's work, they anticipated his retrieval using the mage's hand and stopped Yun Chen from retrieving his weapon. The invaders, assuming Yun Chen would be without a weapon, planned to seize the rare eight-star weapon. Yet, Yun Chen descended with his new fighting sticks, warning them not to soil his weapon with their dirty hands. A forceful punch dispatched the berserker instantly. The remaining foes prepared for a confrontation, only to face Yun Chen's strategic move, he hurled his blink dagger at one. Despite attempts to block, the dagger blinked, reappearing to pierce the enemy in secure victory. Approaching Yun Tang, Yun Chen checked on her well-being while Yun Tang reminded him of the last escaping enemy. The surviving enemy, initially attributing the space mage's failure to Headmaster Ye's intervention, realized that Yun Chen had single-handedly triumphed over the mage. Intimidated by his display of skill, he planned to report the incident to the higher-ups to elevate Yun Chen's threat level. As Yun Tang inquired about the escaped enemy, Yun Chen confidently asserted the futility of escape. With a swift transformation of the fighting sticks into a sniper rifle, he took aim at the fleeing foe, 
swiftly eliminating him with a precise shot. The recoil was so powerful that it ripped apart Yun Chen's sleeves. The conclusion of the battle showcased Yun Chen's formidable prowess, ensuring the safety of his sister and thwarting the invaders' plans. This also serves as a lesson to all villains to never mess with the MC's family members. As the dust settled from the intense battle, Yun Tang's classmates approached to commend Yun Chen for his remarkable skills. Some even playfully expressed future romantic interests, but Yun Tang, feeling protective, urged them to step back. Instructor Li arrived, initially upset with Yun Chen for acting independently. However, upon seeing the defeated enemies scattered around, she was astonished that Yun Chen had single-handedly vanquished them. Yun Chen briefed Instructor Li on the attackers, members of the Advent organization, and their motive to capture Yun Tang as leverage against him. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Instructor Li suggested an immediate relocation of Yun Tang to Jiangnan. Back at the university, Instructor Li briefed Headmaster Yi on the situation, drawing parallels with the previous attack during the competition. Concerns arose about Yun Chen being repeatedly targeted due to the demon lord essence he had absorbed. Headmaster Yi acknowledged that the essence was merely a trigger as elite students like Yun Chen would inevitably become targets. To proactively deal with the Advent organization, all universities had formed hunting teams, allowing students to gain combat experience against the adversaries. Headmaster Yi revealed that Jiang Nan's team, comprised mainly of third and some second year students, was actively engaging the organization. In light of these developments, Headmaster Yi had already made arrangements for Yun Tang to join Jiang Nan High School, alleviating Yun Chen's concerns about her safety. As Yun Tang marveled at her brother's sizable dormitory and happily greeted the adorable flower thorn demon, Yun Chen hoped that her admission would be based on her merit. The intended talent awakening for Yun Tang had been delayed due to the recent monster invasion. Yun Chen handed her an enlightenment potion, emphasizing its significance. Yun Tang was initially unsure if she should drink such an expensive potion but Yun Chen encouraged her to drink it. He hoped it would help Yun Tang unlock a potent talent. Yun Tang, surprised by the potion's sweetness, consumed it. Yun Chen then asked if she felt any changes. Yun Tang mentioned that she is unable to explain this feeling as she walked toward Yun Chen. To his astonishment, Yun Tang instantly appeared in front of him. He analyzed that her talent could potentially be time-related, specifically time flow manipulation. Yun Chen recognized the rarity of such an ability. He promptly informed Instructor Li, and even Headmaster Yi arrived to witness the talent testing. As expected, Yun Tang's awakened talent is indeed time flow. Delighted with the results, Headmaster Yi arranged for Yun Tang to enroll directly in the elite class of year one, with personalized lessons from the vice principal, the mage god. Headmaster Yi stressed the confidentiality of Yun Tang's unique talent and declared it a groundbreaking achievement. He then teleported away to handle this groundbreaking event. Yun Tang was surprised by their reaction but was reminded by Yun Chen to keep her talents a secret. Yun Chen, aware of the Advent organization's threats, planned to take the initiative. He sought access to nightmare-level dungeons, determined to strengthen himself through hard work and preparation. Amidst complaints about the chaos caused by the Advent organization, two students contemplated the need to strengthen themselves by clearing more dungeons for a better chance of survival. Approaching the dungeon hall's reception, they were astonished to learn that all level 20-plus dungeons had been booked by a single student, Yun Chen. Looking at his newest clearing record after conquering the dwarf dungeon and already clearing four more that day, the onlookers were in disbelief at Yun Chen's relentless pace as he is about to start another dungeon challenge without taking any break. Without a break, Yun Chen teleported to the next challenge, the burial ground dungeon. Witnessing the undead rise, he strategized, opting for light and fire elements against these enemies. Seizing the opportunity to test his nether demonic flames, Yun Chen shaped them into two dragons, swiftly clearing the entire burial grounds and setting another record. Throughout the day, Yun Chen continued this remarkable feat, clearing dungeons at an unprecedented speed. Observing his relentless efforts, Nicole discerned the purpose behind Yun Chen's intensive dungeon clearing. In the office, Instructor Li reported to Headmaster Yi about Yun Chen's non-stop dungeon clearing since Yun Tang's settlement in Jiangnan. Students had noticed Yun Chen returning late at night, exhausted. While most students managed one or two dungeons daily, Yun Chen consistently cleared at least four. Headmaster Yi, sensing an ominous undertone, grew concerned about Yun Chen's actions. 
Just then, Yun Chen approached Headmaster Yi, expressing his desire to join the hunting squad. Shocked, Headmaster Yi cautioned about the dangers of such missions, especially for a first-year student. He doubted Headmaster Xia would approve this but was presented with an approval letter from the Ice Queen herself. Headmaster Yi, acknowledging Yun Chen's recklessness, inspected Yun Chen's stats and skills, realizing his exceptional capabilities. Yun Chen, confident in his abilities, received Headmaster Ye's reluctant approval. Despite Instructor Li's concerns about the ongoing threat from the Advent organization, Headmaster Yi speculated that Yun Chen aimed to confront the enemy rather than wait for their interference. Believing the Ice Queen had made appropriate arrangements as he was assigned to join Kathy's group, Headmaster Yi sanctioned Yun Chen's decision. As the hunting squad awaited Yun Chen, some members expressed annoyance at the sudden addition of a new member, questioning his capabilities and suspecting that he was able to join the squad through connections. Annoyed at the prospect of sharing student point rewards, they doubted Yun Chen's contribution. Kathy, overhearing the discussion, pondered the Ice Queen's decision, unsure if Yun Chen was the right choice. Just as she contemplated, Yun Chen arrived, offering his greetings. Upon joining the hunting squad, Yun Chen faced a rather lukewarm reception, with a teammate nonchalantly labeling him a freeloader. However, another member cautioned against offending someone who might hail from a noble family. In the midst of these exchanges, a system notification unveiled the mission, achieving the most contribution in an upcoming task. The mission's lower difficulty meant the exclusion of S-tier skills or talents from the rewards, but it did offer 10 ank of rebirth and a boundary-breaking stone, valuable assets for Yun Chen. Kathy, the squad leader, commenced her briefing on the day's objective, to either capture or defeat a group of enemies entrenched in a warehouse by the lake, suspected members of the Advent organization. After the briefing, they began to move out. The squad neared the warehouse, and Kathy, utilizing natural perception, revealed critical details, 28 enemies inside, all followers of the Dark World, and a particularly formidable foe, likely a three-time job changer. Despite these odds, the team, confident in their abilities, readied themselves for the impending assault. Kathy believes that this will be a good opportunity both for gaining experience and assessing their capabilities. As they charged towards the warehouse, discontent lingered among some students about Yun Chen, whom they considered a freeloader. Breaking through the warehouse roof, they unleashed a barrage of diverse skills upon the enemies within. A follower quickly reported the unfolding situation to the leader, contemplating whether they should abandon the mission. However, the leader, upon detecting only ten attackers, ordered the squad to eliminate them all, instilling a renewed sense of confidence for the impending counterattack. The defenders within the warehouse, primarily Dark World followers, retaliated with their magical prowess. A surprising twist occurred when an ice elemental mage, serving as the leading defender, froze the attackers in place. When questioned about his allegiance, the mage expressed loyalty to a higher being, dismissing any kinship with mere humans. The ice mages ordered his comrades to attack the hunter squad members who are stuck by his ice skills, believing they held the upper hand. At this pivotal moment, Yun Chen's sniper rifle came into play. A flaming bullet pierced through the ice mage, leaving his teammate in awe. They could not comprehend how the bullet managed to bypass the mage's elemental defenses. Yun Chen, equally impressed at the effectiveness of the sure hit talent combined with the sniper rifle, continued to test his new weapon. Detecting enemies concealed behind containers, he fired bullets that penetrated through, catching the adversaries off guard. Even Yun Chen's squad members were taken aback by the unexpected capabilities of his new weapon. Recognizing Yun Chen's growing threat, the enemy leader swiftly ordered the squad to target him first. As adversaries closed in on Yun Chen, his teammates began to move towards Yun Chen to help him. Preparing for the close-range combat, Yun Chen deftly switched to his sword weapon. Displaying remarkable skill, he effortlessly repelled each attacker with a series of precise sword techniques. The rest of the squad, initially skeptical of Yun Chen's contributions, stood in awe as he emerged not as a freeloader but as the main force driving the team's success. As Yun Chen confronted the leader, the leader was taken aback to see Yun Chen wielding the nether demonic flames from the dark world. Suddenly, it clicked, the person in front was Yun Chen, the one who had absorbed the demon lord essence. He is a prime target with a bounty on his head by the Advent organization. Realizing the value of capturing Yun Chen alive, the leader aimed to claim the bounty reward of the God of War Essence. However, Kathy intervened, positioning herself as the leader's opponent. 
In a swift display of prowess, Yun Chen dispatched all of the leader's underlings, while Kathy defeated the leader, who was a three-time promoted member. With their foes vanquished, they proceeded to their next destination. Meanwhile, a sinister group within the Advent organization plotted to attack multiple schools in a secret meeting room. However, before they could act, Yun Chen appeared behind them and swiftly engaged them, catching them off guard. By the time Yun Chen's squad mates caught up, he had already defeated all the adversaries present. Moving on to the next location, Yun Chen's teammates, concerned for his well-being, offered him rest and refreshments, though Yun Chen remained determined to press on. Kathy initially saw this hunting squad expedition as an opportunity for the students to train, yet with Yun Chen shouldering much of the workload, the others had little to do. Just as they thought the mission would proceed smoothly, Kathy received a distress call requesting multiple teams for reinforcement due to the presence of formidable enemies. Kathy explained the gravity of the situation, revealing the existence of at least two three-time promoted members among the adversaries. Upon arrival at the troubled location, a giant manor, they were greeted by Tiger, the local garrison commander. Yunchen felt the dark energy even from this distance as the enemies had no intention of hiding them. Yunchen asked why did the garrison corps only report this now? Tiger explained the delayed response due to the influence of local corruption as the manor was owned by a local wealthy family. The situation escalated further when the reinforcement arrived and the leader called Tiger and the local garrison cowards. It was the first squad, led by Lu Miaoling, the student council president. Yun Chen noted Miaoling's strength, rivaling even Kathy. Miaoling also noted Yun Chen's presence as she was surprised to find a level 26 junior that has not undergone job promotion yet and deduced that this could be the famous year one top student. With everyone assembled, Tiger offered to bring them to a suitable location to plan their attack but Miaoling rejected his offer as she suspected that the local garrison must have been bribed by the evil organization. Miaoling had collected intel before arriving and proposed a strategy to divide their forces, with her infiltrating the enemy's teleportation point while the others launched a frontal assault. Impressed by her plan and preparedness, the rest have no objections to her plan. Moving to their respective positions, they readied themselves for the impending confrontation. However, Yun Chen found the situation strange as this spot was left unguarded. He also felt a hint of darkness energy nearby. Just then, a wave of dark energy burst from the ground and surrounded them. Tiger revealed his true form as a demon descendant, commanding them to kneel before him. Overwhelmed by his dark presence, they realized they were facing a formidable foe indeed. As the confrontation unfolded, Tiger, the demon descendant, fueled by dark energy, posed a formidable threat. Kathy urgently called for reinforcements, only to find their communication devices malfunctioning due to the pervasive dark energy. She pondered the disparity between the demon's power and her own even though he was only a three-time promoted demon. Although demons of the same level would be stronger than humans, the disparity shouldn't be that huge. She began to suspect hidden tricks bolstering his abilities. The team called him a traitor who had colluded with the dark followers to allow them to grow this strong. Tiger, said that he had accepted the demon lord's gift to give up his frail human body to become the transformed demon descendant. He asserted his superiority. Looking at the weakened humans kneeling before him, he believed their submission as proof of his wise choice. Tiger was surprised to see Yun Chen still able to move and goaded him, prompting Yun Chen to unleash a sniper shot infused with nether flames in his dark knight form. However, Tiger effortlessly deflected the attack, acknowledging Yun Chen's powers from the Night Queen. Tiger intends to show Yun Chen the disparity in their powers. Undeterred, Yun Chen launched a fireball, but Tiger shrugged it off with disdain. Deploying a clone to assist him, Yun Chen pressed the assault. Yet, Tiger discerned the real Yun Chen and swiftly punching him into a nearby wall. Despite the team's disbelief at Yun Chen's apparent inability to harm the descendant, he persisted, challenging Tiger to a direct confrontation. Yun Chen taunted Tiger and dared him to move away and not be entrenched at one spot like a tree. Tiger pretended not to know what he meant while Yun Chen declared that victory would be his. Yun Chen then unleashed a blink dagger at Tiger. As the dagger blinked out of his reach and reappeared in front of his face, he had no choice but to move out of the way before the dagger hit his eyes. A trap that Yun Chen set earlier momentarily immobilizes Tiger as he landed, allowing Yun Chen to ensnare him further with more spells. It appeared that Yun Chen had realized the source of Tiger's overwhelming dark energy. 
Yun Chen deduced the location of a hidden artifact emanating darkness energy would be protected by him and launched his spear at the spot where Tiger was standing, destroying the artifact. With its destruction, the malevolent energy dissipated, enraging Tiger. Before Tiger could retaliate, the instructors intervened, urging him to face them for a fair battle. Meanwhile, Yun Chen resolved to confront the remaining dark followers at the manor. As Yun Chen departed, Kathy trusted in his strength but cautioned him to remain vigilant. Arriving at the manor, Yun Chen unleashed his fury, incinerating the dark followers within and venting his frustration at them after being bullied by Tiger in an unfair match earlier. As Yun Chen swiftly moved through the dim corridors of the manor, his spear cutting through adversaries with practiced ease, the followers of the dark world grew increasingly desperate. Cornered and outnumbered, they resorted to the forbidden self-sacrificial ritual, invoking the rift with eerie chants and dark incantations. Despite Yun Chen's rapid approach, he arrived only to witness the culmination of their sinister ceremony, the rift crackling into existence with ominous energy. A surge of concern washed over Yun Chen as he realized the gravity of the situation. This rift, born of dark sacrifice, threatened to unleash upon the world an entity of unimaginable malevolence. With determination, Yun Chen knew that he must act swiftly to disrupt the ritual before it reached its climax. Drawing upon his mastery of various skills, Yun Chen began to apply buffs on himself, channeling arcane energies to enhance his strength and agility. With each passing moment, the rift pulsed ominously and the portal began to take shape. As the rift's energies surged, a colossal hand emerged, attempting to claw their way into the world. Yun Chen, undaunted by the daunting sight before him, met the demonic arm head-on, brandishing his spear with unwavering resolve. With a powerful thrust, he drove the weapon into the hand, eliciting a guttural roar of pain as the demonic limb recoiled momentarily. Yet, even as Yun Chen battled valiantly against the encroaching darkness, he knew that his task was far from over. With grim determination, Yun Chen redoubled his efforts and continued to thrust his spear at the limb. With a final, decisive stroke of his storm axe, the hand was repelled forced to retreat back into the yawning depths of the rift. As the tear in reality began to slowly close, Yun Chen breathed a sigh of relief, the immediate threat averted for now. Yet, a voice surprised him. He realizes his lapse in attention, as the followers had managed to open multiple portals and a demon had arrived. Aware of the imminent danger posed by a potential encounter with a three-time promoted demon, Yun Chen braces himself for a formidable challenge. With each promotion, one can obtain not just a significant amount of attribute points but also the ability to learn higher level skills. The level requirement for the first promotion is at level 10. The following promotions will occur at each level 30. With each promotion, the increase in power level also becomes exponential. In this world, most three-time promoted players hold high status in society. A three-time promoted demon is stronger than a three-time promoted human. It will be a difficult challenge even for Yun Chen. Despite the daunting odds, he resolves to confront the impending threat head-on. With his buffs set to expire soon, Yun Chen prepares to face the demon, knowing that time is of the essence. As the demon charges toward him, the demon mocks Yun Chen's confidence to face him and asks if the Night Queen's talents were the source of his arrogance. Using his divine flash skill, Yun Chen maneuvers behind the demon and strikes at the demon. The demon, boasting of his superior strength, delivers a powerful blow, sending Yun Chen crashing into the wall. The demon followed up with another attack at Yun Chen. Undeterred, Yun Chen activates his invincibility skill, emerging unscathed. Switching to attack mode, he targets the demon's eyes with his danger but the demon was barely able to dodge the dagger, losing only a few strands of his hair. Enraged at Yun Chen's cunning attacks, the demon charged at Yun Chen and began to stomp him on the ground. Yun Chen could only endure the attacks with his arms. As the duration of the invincibility is about to end, his preparation for the counterattack is complete too. All of a sudden, the demon was sent flying into the wall by his own attack as he found a footmark on his chest. While he is still confused, Yun Chen unveils his secret weapon, a familiar scarecrow doll, signaling the beginning of his decisive strike against the demon. The demon, bewildered by the damage inflicted upon himself, faced Yun Chen's interrogation regarding the Advent Organization's headquarters. Yun Chen hoped to eliminate them if their location was known. Despite Yun Chen's pressing, the demon remained tight-lipped. In frustration, Yun Chen damaged the scarecrow's arm, mirroring the effect on the demon's arm, 
twisting it apart. Enraged, the demon summoned chains to attack Yun Chen, who retaliated by crushing the scarecrow, inflicting significant damage. Refusing to betray his kin, the demon threatened Yun Chen with the Dark World's vengeance. Given an ultimatum, join or perish, the demon refused to submit. With no room for negotiation, Yun Chen incinerated the scarecrow with nether demonic flames. With his last breath, the demon warned of the Dark World's impending conquest, unleashing a dark sphere of energy at Yun Chen before disintegrating. Cursing his carelessness, Yun Chen inspected the impact site and discovered a mark on his neck but felt no pain. He resolved to consult Headmaster Xia about the mark and acknowledged the necessity of the Scarecrow in defeating the demon. Recognizing the vast disparity in strength against three-time promoted enemies, Yun Chen contemplated the need for more attribute points and stronger skills. This was the reason why the jobless occupation is known to have no future as they are not able to obtain the increase in power through promotion. During his rest, an attack from Tiger, now in demon form, narrowly missed Yun Chen, signaling imminent danger. Surprised at the sight of Tiger, he questioned the status of the rest of his team. Tiger informed him that they are still alive but badly injured like him. Outside the manor, the instructors were disappointed by their inability to defeat Tiger and began to worry as Tiger was heading toward Yun Chen's direction. They then noticed that there is a missing spearman in the seventh squad. Still weak from the previous battle, Yun Chen prepared to face Tiger, fortified by the prospect of revival with the Ankh of Rebirth. Despite Tiger's offer to spare him if he surrendered himself to the Dark World, Yun Chen refused, opting to fight to the end. Their confrontation was interrupted by a figure leaping into the fray and kicked Tiger into the wall. It was none other than the missing spearman from Yun Chen's squad. She then revealed herself as Headmaster Xia's demon servant, entrusted with protecting Yun Chen. Upon seeing Xiao Yu, Yun Chen realized why Headmaster Xia had arranged for him to join Kathy's squad. Xiao Yu explained that Headmaster Xia had sent her to investigate certain matters discreetly, as it was easier to blend in with a squad rather than move around as a succubus. She noted that when Yun Chen expressed interest in joining a hunting squad, this particular squad proved to be the perfect fit. Tiger questioned Xiao Yu's allegiance, given her noble succubus status, and why she served under humans. Xiao Yu declared her loyalty to her master, stating that Tiger deserved punishment for harming her master's star student. As she prepared to attack, Tiger attempted to flee but was ensnared by Xiao Yu's chains. She revealed that she had been defeated into submission. In a swift final move, Xiao Yu crushed Tiger with her shackles, leaving him lifeless on the ground. Impressed by her prowess, Yun Chen inquired if she had really been defeated into submission by Headmaster Xia, to which she affirmed initially but admitted to being charmed by her and since developed a strong allegiance to Headmaster Xia. She then praised Yun Chen for his prowess to be able to defeat a three-time promoted demon all by himself and said she is also charmed by him. She then disclosed that she had preserved the complete corpses of the two demon descendants and suggested using them as offerings at the altar. Arriving at the altar, Yun Chen learned that offerings could yield valuable rewards from the gods, such as medicines and god-tier equipment. Xiao Yu explained that the altar could be used by both humans and dark followers. The results depend on the type of offering, if the offering is human, the gods from the dark world will answer, if the offering is demon, the gods from humanity will answer the prayers. Yun Chen prayed for a powerful skill suitable for his jobless class. As the lights shined on the altar after hearing Yun Chen's prayers, the demon corpses disappeared, resulting in the acquisition of a skill that allowed him to fuse basic skills into a new one. After receiving his new skill, Yun Chen was pleased with the results. He then bid farewell to Xiao Yu, who departed on another mission. He proceeded to check on Lu Miaoling in the backyard, finding her sitting atop a heap of defeated enemies. Surprised by her ability to handle the enemies single-handedly, he was impressed by her strength. Back to Headmaster Xia's office, Xiao Yu reported on her successful protection of Yun Chen and shared gathered intel on the Advent Organization's next objective. At the Forge House, Ma Jia Shu apologized for his absence and proudly confirmed that the design of his new weapon has been completed. Yun Chen requested an upgrade of the sniper rifle to diamond grade, shocking Ma Jia Shu with his abundance of student points. Casually mentioning his encounters with three time promoted demon descendants, Yun Chen awaited the upgraded weapon as Ma Jia Shu promised to complete the upgrade within 10 days. A group of students engaged in a discussion about the upcoming global competition, where top talents worldwide would compete. 
They were surprised to learn that the top year one student from Jiangnan University qualified to represent Xianlong Kingdom, an unusual scenario as the participants mostly consist of year three students. Back in the training room, Yin Chen enhanced the formation breaker with the boundary stone, elevating it to white gold grade. He had also put in place safety measures and gave some extra ank of rebirth to Yun Tang. He also noted the progress of Xiao Jing, the flower thorn demon, who had leveled up to the same level as Yun Chen during their training sessions. He looked forward to incorporating skill fusion with Xiao Jing to elevate her battle capabilities. Xiao Yu appeared to escort Yun Chen to meet Headmaster Xia, who was pleased with his advancement to level 30. Yun Chen attributed his rapid progress to defeating the three time promoted demon. He then showed them the mark left by the demon during their battle, shocking both Headmaster Xia and Xiao Yu. It turns out to be the Soul Chaser Seal of the Night Demons. This mark will allow them to lock on to the target's location at all times, allowing them to hunt him down. Headmaster Xia immediately instructed Xiao Yu to bring out Poseidon Elephant Fat. She explained that the mark could only be removed using a demon's corpse as an offering. Otherwise, they would need to make the Night Killer Princess of the 72 Pillar Demon to remove the mark since the Night Demons are her underlings. Since she is located in the Dark World and all 72 Pillar Demons are Demon Lords, Yun Chen is not their match yet. Headmaster Xia then applied Poseidon Elephant Fat, explaining its effectiveness in blocking the seal temporarily. After applying the fat, Headmaster Xia advised Yun Chen to use it daily until they found a permanent solution. With the immediate threat averted, Headmaster Xia sought Yun Chen's opinion on demons. Yun Chen found them similar to humans, prompting Headmaster Xia to discuss the differences between their worlds. Despite the dark world's beauty, its high concentration of magic made it inhospitable to humans. When the rift was opened, the high level of magic leaked into the human world, causing plants to wither and monsters to go berserk. Understanding the allure of the dark world, Yun Chen realized why some humans might betray their kind to become demons. Headmaster Xia emphasized the importance of an upcoming mission, revealing that the global competition was the next target of the Advent organization. She instructed Yun Chen to participate to thwart their plans. With a mission soon issued by the system rewarding him based on his performance in the global competition, Yun Chen's decision to join the competition is made. Five days later, the play-in competition to determine Jiang Nan University's representatives commenced. While Lu Miaoling secured her spot, the second spot would be decided among the year three students via the play-in competition. As the competition was about to begin, Yun Chen made a dramatic entrance, apologizing to his seniors and asserting his claim to the second spot. The arena buzzed with confusion as spectators questioned why a year one student was allowed to participate. With the frontline battlefield occupied by Year 4 students, many believed the competition was primarily for stronger Year 3 contenders. Just as the debate intensified, a call for silence rang out, originating from Lu Miaoling. She asserted that there were no rules restricting participation to Year 1 students and emphasized that anyone capable of proving their strength could represent Xian Long Kingdom. The unexpected support from the student council president surprised the crowd who argued that the limited slots should be reserved for year 3 students. Miaoling, undeterred, taunted them, challenging their confidence in defeating a year 1 contender. As more year 3 students entered the arena to challenge Yun Chen's claim, his 7th hunting squad teammates anticipated that somebody is gonna get hurt real bad as these seniors have not heard of Yun Chen's performance in the hunting squad. Facing multiple challengers, Yun Chen invited them to attack him simultaneously to save time. Despite being outnumbered, Yun Chen effortlessly deflected the first attacker's assault, sending them flying. As more seniors launched spells at him, Yun Chen summoned demonic flames in the shape of a dragon to defend himself. The crowd marveled at Yun Chen's ability to hold his own against two time promoted seniors, attributing his high attributes to the demon lord essence. However, a member of the student council who was annoyed at Yun Chen's arrogance to challenge everyone and casted a prison formation on Yun Chen's location, entrapping him. Yun Chen found himself unable to break free. Acknowledging the mage's skill, Yun Chen summoned another skill, skill fusion, combining contract summoning and druid's growth to evolve Xiao Jing into a flower thorn girl. Surprised by the appearance of a white gold grade summon using only basic skill, the attackers remained undeterred as Xiao Jing unleashed a barrage of seeds. The seeds initially seemed harmless but they suspected the seeds having additional abilities. 
Yunchen accelerated their growth with rainfall, spawning miniature versions of Xiao Jing to disrupt the attackers. With Xiao Jing's thorn assault attacking the ground surrounding the prison formation, the prison formation shattered, freeing Yun Chen. Impressed by Yun Chen's prowess, the student council member decided to give his all to defeat him. However, Vice President Ao Chang, a two-time promoted corpse driver, intervened, challenging Yun Chen to a duel. Noting Miao Ling's support for Yun Chen earlier, he proposed a bet with Miao Ling. Accepting the challenge, Miao Ling agreed to go on a date with Ao Chang if he defeated Yun Chen. As the crowd dispersed, Yun Chen recalled Xiao Jing, preparing for the impending battle against Ao Chang. Aware of Ao Chang's strength, Yun Chen readied himself, eager to test out new abilities. As the judge confirmed that the match would determine who secures the spot for the global competition, both Ao Chang and Yun Chen agreed. Ao Chang, fueled by the motivation to win a date with Miao Ling, warned Yun Chen of his unwavering determination and summoned vengeful spirits to debuff Yun Chen's attributes. Yun Chen noticed his attributes lowering and swiftly neutralized the debuffs with the Purify skill. Ao Chang capitalized on the distraction caused by the spirits and launched an attack on Yun Chen. Although Yun Chen anticipated it and blocked the strike, he realized that Ao Chang's weapon was hollow and lacked power and found it strange. Wondering why Ao Chang opted for close-ranged combat, Yun Chen found himself momentarily dazed, allowing Ao Chang to strike his right arm, causing Yun Chen to drop his weapon. As Yun Chen retreated without his weapon, he felt a sudden powerlessness in his right arm, despite no visible wound. Ao Chang explained that his weapon was very special that helped him decide his profession. It was the morning rod of the unique profession Black Impermanence, one of the deities known to escort the spirits of the dead to the underworld. Due to unknown reasons since the merger of the game world and reality, several unique professions were created, these are professions that can only be held by one player. While they may not be the strongest, they are always very unique and require strict requirements and a huge amount of luck to obtain them. Ao Chang obtained the rod by accident and dedicated his life to becoming the Black Impermanence. The rod allowed its wielder to see the souls of other people and can also inflict soul damage. Yun Chen's arm would recover within the hour from the minor damage, but Ao Chang noticed something unusual, Yun Chen's body contained two souls, indicative of dual personalities, a revelation that puzzled Yun Chen. Summoning his sword back, Yun Chen declared his intention to take Ao Chang's weapon to uncover the truth about his dual soul. Enraged by Yun Chen's audacity, Ao Chang threatened to kill him. His extreme overreaction surprised Yun Chen as he found Ao Chang petty. Ao Chang released the pool of infernal spirits at Yun Chen to trap him. Despite dispersing the evil spirits immediately, Yun Chen's speed had been significantly reduced by the debuffs, prompting him to realize the need to end the match quickly. As Yun Chen slashed at Ao Chang, his attack was easily blocked, prompting Yun Chen to summon a clone. Ao Chang countered by summoning an evil spirit to fight the clone, overpowering it due to the debuffs. The evil spirit then sent Yun Chen flying back. Ao Chang released more evil spirits to surround Yun Chen, aiming to further reduce his stats. Determined to counter the debuffs with his own buff, Yun Chen used skill fusion to combine all basic buffs from different professions, creating a new skill and altering his appearance. The new skill, 10,000 Wheels, significantly boosted Yun Chen's attributes but came with the risk of leaving him weakened afterward. Yun Chen's new skill shocked everyone present as they had never heard of this skill and thought the jobless profession could only use basic skills. Despite the power surge, Yun Chen was taken aback by the substantial drain on his magic energy. Meanwhile, Ao Chang persisted in launching spirits and debuffs at him, but Yun Chen's heightened speed made it impossible for Ao Chang to keep up. Swiftly maneuvering behind Ao Chang, Yun Chen struck Ao Chang with another basic skill but was easily blocked by a summoned evil spirit. Ao Chang taunted Yun Chen and said that he could not be harmed by any basic skills. Yun Chen responded by attacking Ao Chang with advanced skills formed using skill fusion. Ao Chang attempted to defend himself, but Yun Chen's onslaught proved overwhelming. This result stunned the crowd, who had never witnessed such techniques before. Stepping on a fragment of the morning rod, Yun Chen saw the truth. As Yun Chen walked towards Ao Chang, Ao Chang conceded defeat and begged him not to take his weapon away. Yun Chen no longer had a need to take his weapon. Back in the break room, Yun Chen examined a fragment of the morning rod and could see souls as Ao Chang mentioned. 
he also saw the two souls within his body. He discerned his own soul and another mysterious one that was connected directly to the sky, a potential link to the system within him, raising questions about its nature and purpose. In Headmaster Ye's office, the surprising news of Yun Chen's victory in the competition for the global competition spot left Headmaster Ye puzzled. Instructor Li attributed it to Headmaster Xia's guidance, suggesting deeper implications behind Yun Chen's participation. Anticipating significant developments, Headmaster Yi speculated about the Ice Queen's forthcoming actions in the upcoming global competition. Reporting to the Ice Queen, Xiaoyu conveyed Yun Chen's success in securing the participation spot. Headmaster Xia expected this result and anticipated more challenges ahead. Asking about the reinforcement available for the upcoming fight against the Advent organization, the military could offer only minimal support due to the tough frontline situation, with limited personnel available from each region. Expecting busy days ahead, Headmaster Xia prepared for forthcoming developments. Over the next few days, Yun Chen continued his lessons and daily tasks to enhance his strength. Meanwhile, worldwide, over 500 countries selected their representatives after intense internal competitions, all heading to the chosen location for the global competition, the Holy Empire. However, alongside the contestants, members of the Advent organization began their sinister movements, intending to unleash terror from the dark world upon the world. One month later, Yun Tang expressed frustration as Yun Chen prepared for the global competition, realizing he wouldn't be available to spend the holidays with her. Limited by his inventory space, Yun Chen explained that expanding it required job promotions, a method that is unavailable to him as a jobless class. This leaves him little room for extra luggage as he had to fill them with weapons and important items. Yun Tang had heard of powerful players' expansive inventories that resulted from multiple promotions, prompting Yun Chen to mention space soil as another means of expansion. Nicole interrupted, asking for a walk with Yun Chen alone. She informed Yun Chen that she will be returning to Silvermoon Forest for her second promotion, which means that they will not see each other for the whole summer vacation period. Grateful for Yun Chen's company and assistance, she gifted him a valuable necklace, downplaying its significance. Embarrassed, she left before Yun Chen could react. Shortly after that, Miaoling arrived, signaling it was time to depart for the Holy Empire. On the airship, instructor Sun Fei welcomed them, pledging assistance. When the instructor left, Yun Chen asked why the instructor appeared to be serving them. Miaoling explained that, despite their lower rank, their potential exceeded even the instructors, warranting respect. Yun Chen questioned the dynamic, prompting Miaoling to elaborate on strength determining status in their world. Yun Chen queried the necessity of competitions amidst resource shortages, to which Miaoling explained they were essential for training future fighters and allocating resources among countries. The battle for resources had already begun since the college entrance exam as the students fought for the best college with their strength. The subsequent competitions that Yun Chen had joined were also battles to get more resources via competition rewards. She revealed the global competition's purpose, determining ownership of disputed territories and neutral areas. This will avoid unnecessary internal strife between humans, a strategy learned from years of battling the dark world. Miaoling jokingly mentioned their bet's outcome. Yun Chen winning meant the right to go on a date with Miaoling was now his reward. Yun Chen however saw it differently and said it is only a reward if Miaoling is the one who brings him out on a date. His response surprised Miaoling who found him amusing. She then graciously asked Yun Chen on a date and he agreed, eager to gather intel in the Holy Empire. Arriving at the city of Sire, Yun Chen noticed special lights at the gates, explained by Sun Fei as security measures for the competition. Excited to have arrived. Yun Chen's weariness was forgotten as Miaoling dragged him off for their date. 